Hey there, Shahan fans, and welcome to Masks of the Mythos, the newest Scion 2nd Edition supplement, along with Dragon, successfully kickstarted in 66 minutes. Last I checked, we were on 13 stretch goals, might be 14 by now. Definitely get on board if you have a giant pile of goodies. I am Tyler, other checkers online, and I will be your master of the macabre for this tale. We are Vorpal Tales, and we have all kinds of terrifying tales and awesome adventures we play every day of the week. For other Onyx Path goodness, you can enjoy with us on Saturdays. Find us playing Deviant the Renegades, a story I'm calling Radiation Burns. On Tuesdays, starting next week, Dragon, Scion 2nd Edition, run by Patrick. Uh, every Friday, Patrick also runs our Scarred Land story, Dracula Genesis Titan's Lament. And starting in this Sunday, book one of our Mage Chronicle, White Walls, Mage of the Ascension 20th Anniversary Edition, crossed over with the Cthulhu Mythos of Cult. Look us up on our website at VorpalTales.com to find our calendar, social media links, YouTube archives, past games, and so much more. Come check us out. Special thanks tonight to Astral Tabletop, who makes the virtual tabletop we use for all of our games. My brother at N8Mid for the custom character sheets we use in Astral for all these awesome Onyx games, and you can use too if you use Astral to play virtual gaming. And thanks to Onyx Path Publishing for yet more awesome supplements to play. Scions of the Outer Dark. Please tell the audience who you are and who your character is. That's terrifying, too. Hi, I'm at Space Lord PJs, and I will be playing Kurt Harrison, the Scion of Azathoth. Can you say that again? I didn't quite get that one. Azathoth. Perfect. Hey, everybody. I'm Ever. My pronouns are they, them, and tonight I will be playing Malcolm, who is the Scion of Nyarlathotep. I'm not going to do the because it just be weird. Then you'd be stealing. <clears throat> Hello, I am Patrick. I'm right on the, everyone on the internet as Patty Shakes and Sports. Tonight I'll be playing Marius. And to fact check our DM, that's 15 stretch goals unlocked. Count them 15. Thanks. Uh, I am Rachel. You can find me on social media, uh, Stolen Fires, pretty much everywhere. And I will be playing Lena, uh, art thief, con woman, and scion of Albatrom, a aquatic deity. And it's a me, a made of kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight I will be playing Maria West, <laughs> the scion of Gatanathoa. Unless you drift off screen. I know, why am I so far right? <laughs> far away, far away. And I am Devin, Dirty Thief, online at Sorta of Thul- sort of Sullied. And I am Isaiah Baldwin, and Scion of Yog Fucking thief. I said it in the intro. Just re emphasizing. <clears throat> Alright then. And now, since we actually have one, a recap of last session. If you please, whoever I assigned it to. Me! It's always awesome. me. <clears throat> we deconstruct the crime scene and find several important clues. The painting, missing. And it looks like something was dragged towards its spot. Eldritch energies flood the air. Bipedal animal tracks are interspersed amongst the blood tracks as well. Bits of an indescribable and infinitely fascinating jewel are found and collected, but moments later, they disappear. On the laptop, which was found and on open and on low battery, is found several pawn shop receipts and tracking of loans and bets with amounts. The name Gilman is bolded and the debt large, 25 Gs. The phone shows the last three calls made were to the police. The whisper... Whoa, excuse me. <clears throat> the police, the Whisper Auction House, and then Marius. <clears throat> Google Maps is pulled up with, de- with destination set to Levy Collection House. Next to the bed is a pile of fresh vomit and a fake police badge from Harold's year-round Halloween shop. The nosy neighbor, a Karen, talks to Lena and finds out a uniform came by in a hurry, but very polite. As the group leaves... The young girl neighbor tells Marius the cop left the painting, had a fake badge, a backpack, and looked sick. We look up Gilman and learn he is a reclusive millionaire with extremely shady guards and not a lot of time for non-business meetings. 
The Levies are a fabulously wealthy family that have the Levy Collection House, a family gallery that experienced multiple homicides last night. Sarah Levy is the matriarch founder, and Alexa is her granddaughter and current leader. We decided to follow up on Harold's year-round Halloween shop first. Marius chats up Harold in French, while the others look around and quickly find the cop costume and badges that are an exact match. Just... We try to ask Harold about the person who purchased these, but he is unable to recall due to a mythos rather protecting him. We are able to bribe the security tape from Harold, but the person is blurred off of the footage. The team gets lunch at five in and out guys, and burgers are had all around according to the players' personalities. The teams then decide to split into two, Team Honeypot and Team Broken Legs. Team Honeypot, consisting of Malcolm and Lena, meet with Marius' loose-lipped cop contact, Walter. Lena expertly flirts with him and agrees to a romantic dinner date in three days' time and finds out more about the Levy case. Looks like the family and others were attacked and partially eaten. Detective Jill Carter is the case owner and has established that several things were stolen, including a painting called The Dreamland. Team Broken Legs, consisting of the rest of the group, went to see Gilman, who turned out to be a deep one, a.k.a. the Big Fish. Kurt agrees to make a deal for some of the proceeds of his next record in exchange for info about Whispers, Ben's Fence. He gives the address of the next event of the Whisper Auction House and the code to get into the event tomorrow. The group meets back up, exchanges info, knowing that the final showdown is around the bend. Thank you, sir. Please review as a group your clues before we see you. continue so everyone has them fresh in the brains. And if you miss any that you got, I will fill you in. Well, we know about whispers. What do you know about whispers? He's a fence. Mm hmm. That was a oh. she. I think uh, it's un unidentified as of yet. Yeah, right now. they have like that <coughs> something going on that makes them hard to pin down or recognize. And then there was also the fake cop. Alright, the fake cop. Yeah, I think Whispers is the fake cop, so the same person who broke in and got the painting. Hence why they're, well, hence why they're able to auction it as they went and came and either stole it or reclaimed it from Ben. Oh, yeah. you made that like connection? Was... Is that? Yes, I believe that was the connection we made at the end. That was We were able to make that logical leap. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's also, um, there was that, uh, very wealthy family. The Levy like, family, yes. Everybody died last night. Yeah, and, like, they were partially eaten. And they had, the the cops found two other humanoids as well. Right, they were, they were partially eaten, and we also <laughs> discovered animal tracks in, like, Sad Sack's apartment. And also yes, the right. uh, yeah, I can't remember his name. How they were cut name. with something that was extremely sharp, and that was probably in relation to uh, uh, a relic. Yes, I, it, it, I, it was confirmed I, scion activity. Yeah, but specifically, didn't we say that that was? Uh, I forget his name. Odin, Odin scion. Ben. Yes, Ben. Thought we said something about that. Being him, possibly. Mm -hmm. And then we know that someone else is using a relic to cloud the memory of uh, Harold. Yes, which is Whispers. Whispers is using that relic. Man, he's got all the relics. This guy's cool. Hang out. Uh. We know that there's some strange, something odd about the painting. It's not just a painting. It's partially, partially or completely responsible for all the shit that's going down. Right, right. You also have the name of the painting. Yes. The Dreamlands, mm -hmm. yes. And the name of the uh, detective in charge of the homicide investigation because he can't get into the site. Jill Carter. Yep. So, we return to large marches, where you're enjoying bacon, donuts, as you have regrouped to decide right. what to do next. Are we at the donut barn or the deli barge? Donut barn. 
Yeah, it's morning. You can't go to the deli barge for morning. That just... It's like sacrilege. Although they do open at like 10.30 to service those people that like work the weird shift. Yeah, like, yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The deli is open from 10 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Why, so, why is it closed so late? Or so it's early? Deli. That would be, like I guess that'd be early some places. Yeah. That's a deli. They have like weird, trippy, uh, fancy restaurant hours at that one. Yeah, but I feel like they're missing out on like a whole night crowd that just like. Oh, they, they'll, they'll cater and do delivery something. Like oh, okay. You can't go in. Oh, after uh, so it's like it's places. like when you go <laughs> to like the Taco Bell and like the dine-ins, but the drive-throughs open. Exactly. So like through. Okay. Unspeakable things happen when the restaurant closes and only delivery is available. Shapes can be seen squirming in the darkness. No one really knows how the deliveries are made. They just know that they get there. I really want to delve into Large Marge's Donut Bar and forget this auction thing. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> yeah, right. campaign coming soon. <laughs> We just put the word out there. Don't don't get entertaining. Maybe just burn it, you know, for <laughs> safety's sakes. And then let's yeah. really dive into large march here. Yeah, I, and we did. Yeah. We did know what time the auction is occurring, right? Yes, we are given the time, location, and the secret passphrase. Nine p.m. tomorrow. You have one day. What's the secret passphrase, Tyler? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, I got this. To, no, I'm kidding. To shadow butterfly. The narwhal bacons at midnight. Had this translator and I use it sometimes, <clears throat> but no one ever notices. So now I can use it. Okay. There it is. Patrick, why don't you tell us what the secret passphrase is? I put it in Discord. Relo o Cthulhu Megalogoga. Or something like that. Yeah, nailed it. It is the secret Cthulhu password. Hey! Uh, hey. For anyone who's bored, lingojam.com slash relay. <laughs> It'll translate any words it can find. Into gibberish for you. <laughs> awesome. The passphrase is. What's the name of your rock band, Sean? Oh, man. We came up with a name that was just like real slick. Um. I can't think of what it was now. Boy the colors. passphrase is Raven's Megadeth. Raven's Meg... No, I don't like that. No. I mean, you don't get to pick their password. They do. It's right. But it, Sock Pup Puppet Supremes? Sock Puppet Supremes. <laughs> oh, no. It was going to be Raven no matter what. Kind of dig Raven's that. Raven's Sean's band. Since he can't think of his, it's Megadeth. <clears throat> we could go with Raven's Corn. No... Raven's Nine Inch Nails is a little weird. I was going to say just Raven's Nails. Raven's Raven's Raven. Nails. Yep. Yeah. That's the past phrase. Raven's Nails. There we go. You could call it Conspiracies Abound. Yeah. Your band. He means your band. Yeah. 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 yeah you know, like a, a, con a conspiracy of crows or ravens, I mean. Oh, conspiracies uh, abound. Yeah, I dig it. Conspiracies abound. I leave the scene to you. <laughs> and it's not morning anymore. It's midday. So you're having... You know what? We will go to the deli because it's midday. <laughs> it, took us, it took us four hours to figure you out what your, what your band's name is. <laughs> you, well, you actually started at seven in the morning because you spent a while following the clues. So, Deli Barge it is. Plus, you had to arrange to meet the police officer and then meet the police officer. Uh, 
Oh, the uh, the lead detective? No. The no. police officer that... Walter. Yeah. Uh, the one that Lena uh, seduced the answers out of without ever actually seducing him. Very well done. Well, if this is going to be like a, I'm guessing this is probably going to be like a gala event. Or at least a secret gala event. We're probably going to want to get some clothes. <clears throat> well, I'm going like this because I am this. Also, do we really have to go? I'm. He points to his present clothing positive. that is now covered in toast spread because he ate three clubs. Yeah. I'm positive we can find you a better outfit. In fact, I am I am positive I can find all of you. No, it just sounds really Something hard. Classy and glamorous and elegant. Can't we just see. Tell them to like burn the painting or something or like just don't look at it or put it in the vault. I feel like this is just a lot of work. Well, if they were normal people, that might help. That might work, but I'm pretty sure that they want to use the painting for nefarious reasons. Else, why go through all the trouble? You know, I'm starting to wonder how they were able to use the painting without it lashing out at them themselves. Did they use the mask, and it like made the painting forget about it? I believe the answer is a tarp. A well, tarp would work too. But you really want one of those quality tarps, like that blue plastic stuff. You don't want like anything else. Just tear. It is possible that uh, the painting only works under certain conditions, or the scene it caused last time was uh, the last one that it'll do for a while. Perhaps it has a certain hunger that it must sate and it sated it for the time being. It's also possible that the artifact or whatever Whispers has, um, if you can't see it, it can't see you. Yeah. Mm. The T Rex defense, yes. <laughs> it's within the realm of possibility. Hmm. Or maybe he has something else entirely. Cosmic painter's gloves. Or maybe you just have to look at it for a certain amount of time before it activates. He did have it all night before uh, something happened. next steps I think should be getting all of you gala ready I look up the same suit I always wear with my fedora I always wear with the same dress shirt or anything I am ready <laughs> mm, you're not I have a blue suit if if the black it does not work? Is it clean? It looks exactly like this one. Mm. I think it's time to go shopping. Mm. Yay, shopping montage. If you say so, but... Uh, <clears throat> I am as they say. Fly. Mm. I have mine ready. I just need some time. I don't oh, I own don't. anything pretty. I own a lot of shirts with pockets and tennis shoes. Uh, well, I, I can buy you a dress with pockets. There is nothing wrong with pockets. Pockets are quite nice. All right, here, here is an alternative option for those of you who seem to have an endemic allergy to 
dressing up. Uh, we could dress you like catering staff. <sighs> that just requires mm. wearing, like, a tuxedo. No, no. no uh, black trousers, crisp white shirt, um, possibly a tie. The only problem comes uh, from someone. The only problem comes from someone recognizing uh, our relatively well-known faces. Uh, we have a rock star, and just about anyone who would be at this would probably know who I am. Uh, mm. Being a private investigator, uh, so maybe some of the uh, newer people to town, but still, you know, we risk being seen and identified maybe so maybe i did i did so well talking to the fish guy that maybe i should go in and do the auctioning as me because i'm me and then it will be like "Ooh, it's him and i'll be like yeah of course and then it just sounds like a lot of work about whatever else you guys are doing so i actually think that's a good idea um <clears throat> Because you can divert attention away from the rest of us. Right. So I could be like, hi, and they'll be all like, ooh, and then you guys could be like, sneaky, sneaky in the back. Exactly. One of, one of us could be your assistants. Sure. Uh, I'll stand imposingly next to him. Um, okay. And you're Everyone an artist, a uh, musician. That's true. <clears throat> so maybe the PI would be a bit better, since he apparently has been burned so many times that everyone knows his face. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, bye, Patty. Hi. <laughs> So, you finish lunch and decide that no one's going to listen to Lena about tuxedos. Then what? <laughs> oh, Malcolm has plenty of tuxedos. <coughs> so. Also, the rocker doesn't really need a tuxedo. He's going to be expected to be a little eccentric. Right. I'm sure. What are you going to do with the rest of your day, though, and all of tomorrow? I suppose the less fortunate or less stylistically inclined could use a helping hand from myself and Lena. So are you saying you don't want to follow up on any leads at all? You just want to wait out the auction? No, don't do that. I'm yeah. perfectly okay with you just walking in blindly to the auction. <laughs> oh no, definitely following up leads. Yeah, it's only going to take a couple hours to go shopping. Yeah. Uh, should we call up the investigator? See if I we can. I presume you mean the detective. Or yeah, yeah. See if we can milk any information out of her, or should we try and go to the. Uh, Scene of uh, uh, scene of the second crime. You can't get into the house. That's been established. You've been told ninety different ways. You're not getting in that house. Your only lead there is the detective. You you were warned by several people you talked to. There's no way you're getting in there short of a fight, including God Himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm down for that. <laughs> I vote we talk to the lead investigator. I think being the PI, Patty's probably, or Marius is probably the most inclined with the legal speak and whatnot for that. Sure. Just a guess. Sure. Do we have any contact information for the detective, or do we need to 
meet up with them through your police contact. Um, you don't think you have any special access to this detective? You'll have to yeah. go in raw. <clears throat> Plus, I think we've already picked the bones of uh, my Walter. contact. Plus, it's not like he wants. To, he only he only did it for a pretty face. He, he doesn't want to talk to me. Does anyone want to, are we like, we're gonna talk to her as a group or you just want me to go, do you just want Marius to go by himself? <coughs> That's a good question. Maybe you and a pretty face? Yeah, there you go. Honeypot that shit. If Lynn is okay with that. I mean, stick, I was stick to our guns. About to <laughs> suggest giving myself disturbing visions. Um. Ooh. What is. Patrick's uh, appearance stat. What? How good do you, how good do you want to look? Is Patrick a pretty face? How pretty are you? By Patrick himself? No, your character. <laughs> he's a, he's oh, a handsome. You're, you're clearly a nine. Right. I was about to say, uh, <laughs> no, Marius is the, guy, is the guy from the picture of the background who can clearly see that is a beautiful man right there. Um, hold on. What do I want you to roll? I'm going to want you to roll. It's going to be intellect because this is a memory thing. With. Oh, what do I want to use for politics? Presence. Power. Of, we're going to do intellect plus presence. See okay. how many of these see how many of these cops you may have met through sheer force of what you do. Okie dokie. Four successes. You needed one. Uh <laughs> this particular detective is a she and likes the gentleman. <clears throat> uh perhaps it would be best if maybe just I go. Uh and uh Maris, obviously not being... He, he doesn't like to fall back on this, but he will unbutton one of his dress shirt buttons. A, uh, it is, as they say, in the bag. Also, because you got four successes, she likes submissive gentlemen, shall we say. Oh. But does she like men with accents? It's not really about the accent for her. It's about the gentleman. Power. Yes. Uh, Lena will fish some cologne out of her purse and give him a couple quick spritz. Thank you. I mean, Patty could... Er, not. I'm calling you by your real name. Uh, uh, Marius? I, yeah, Marcus, Marius could fake it, or Marius could, you know, bring along your, at least by outward appearance, meeker male compatriot. Everyone looks at the rock star. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's actually got a Another club sandwich stuff is about war. <laughs> war. Uh, Kurt, do you have, uh, I assume since you are a rocker, that you have, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the bracelets and, uh, the choker? Yes? Hair and sense of hedonism. What are you talking about? When you when you uh, when you go on the stage and uh -huh. you uh, you do your rocker thing, um, uh -huh. you you wear things for the stage, yes. Uh -huh. Like you 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 and your band you dress up. Uh huh. 
I mean, I used to, but now, like, that I'm famous, I don't have to care about that. So, like, mm -hmm. I tend to wear just, like, you know, pajama pants. I don't bother mm. with the shirt, because, like, it doesn't... Like, the chafing can happen, like, when you're, when you're, like, belting out things, and, like, you got, like, got, like, the guitar, like, the, the sweat from you your stomach. You do still own natural. all of that stuff, though. It is. It, it, is it perhaps in the storage or uh, in uh, a, clo a closet? I mean, sure. Yeah. In a closet. How would you, how would you like to, uh, as they say, relive your glory days? I mean, it sounds like so much work. Just, uh, I guess. I mean, I feel like, I feel like, can't you just talk to them? Like, why do I? I'm following the threads of this conversation correctly. I think she'll be doing most of the work. I guess I could just sit there for a while. <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, sitting. Um, sure. Maybe, maybe you bring a pair of knee pads. Uh, yeah. I do not know if she has a, a carpenter tile. I used to use like this pillow, like it was really nice. Uh, it was like soft, but it was sort of. I memory do not foam, think you'll be awarded foam. the pleasures of a pillow. Oh well, all right. Well, I have a custom kneeling bench. How Catholic is she? I I have no Unless idea what you we're are uh, about. a good boy. Wait, am I a dog? I don't want to be. Uh, wait. In a ma in a manner of speaking, she might she might she might refer to you as a good boy or uh, my puppy. No, I have far too much self esteem to be doing that sort of thing. That's ridiculous. No. Uh, that's something you can negotiate. Think of it. Think of the. Uh, uh, the the life experience uh you'll be able to sing about it yes and put it into your work well that was like on my third album in like a while ah, so the like a, a a uh a a uh the throwback no throwbacks are like so like 2019. Think, of it as a think of it as a chance to relive the glory days mm -hmm. purple tales would like to point out out of character just because you're a submissive does not mean you lack self-esteem, but Kurt's kind of dumb. <laughs> Carry on! <laughs> uh, think, of it, think of it this way, Kurt. Uh, you will learn new things about yourself, yes? Perhaps uh, if you keep the things out of the closet permanently. Why are you whoring me out? I No. Like, because you are like so good looking, man. and you're so good looking, and you're so famous, and uh, she this would be for her what she might consider uh, feather and cap. All right, I, this looks like it's not quite working. So, um, Isaiah, what kind of mood are you in right now? I was gonna say, uh, Kurt, you can get like two boxes of donuts when you're done. But I could just get two boxes of donuts now. Yeah, but then you can have two more. Okay, this is ridiculous. I, I, I will do. I will do it. I will do it. See, uh, yeah, I'm going to the auction, and you, you do the stuff. Like that's, we're teamwork. We're teamworking. <sighs> Carrying this investigation on my own shoulders. I will go see Joe. All right, Marys. <clears throat> so, we'll move the scene to the police station. <laughs> Kurt is so useless. I love it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you arrive at the police station, which is a three-story building. Could easily hold dozens and dozens of officers, but rarely has that many all at one time. Uh, so, you're led inside with relatively little problem. The... Uh, front desk sergeant just kind of waves you through and says, oh, hey, Marius. Hello. And you're now standing in the bullpen looking around. 
Uh, Sarge is uh, a detective Carter here. Carter? Uh, no, Carter's out on uh, dealing with that big murder case. Why? What you need? Maybe I can hook you up. I was hoping to talk to her to, uh, I think, uh, perhaps uh, one of the cases I'm working on uh, might cross with hers. Make a, a cunning plus uh, composure roll. Cunning. Composure. Roll. Three successes. See if I drop the name of that lady we talked to who said she called the police on our friend. Oh, the Karen? <laughs> yeah. Her, yeah, uh, her name her was... Her actual uh, name... Nancy? Correct. Oh, I didn't write her actual name. <laughs> it was Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> I believe uh, uh, a woman named uh, Nancy uh, from the uh, um, hold on, don't hold on, don't say anything from the uh, from the, uh, the Armstead Spire Apartments. And they give me persuasion plus manipulation so that we don't have to do it in the middle of the scene. Manipulation. Plus persuasion. Persuasion. Not, my, not, not a better roll for me. Uh, can I say that this would count as a part of my investigation? I could use my on the case uh, knack. Yes. Okay. This, that means I get a plus one enhancement. Okay. <laughs> uh, three successes, though. Holy shit. Nice. So, ask again in here. Uh, is it possible to see uh, Detective uh, Carter? Uh, I believe uh, one of our well, a suspect of mine crosses with one of her cases, and uh, it's a uh, it's uh, a Nancy from the Armstead Spire. <laughs> yeah, sure. Nancy rolls his eyes real hard. I think he pulled an eye muscle there. Yes, uh, she is uh, a trade DPC, uh, as, as we say. She calls at least twice. At least She calls every day at least twice. Holy shit. That <laughs> woman's a Karen. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. <laughs> I just not want to make the calling myself, but uh, yes, I will. I will have to agree. And her husband, too. Just as bad. Why? I, I do not know. No, but no. Yes. He, why do you... Oh. Why do... Why do you care? What's your... What's your? Oh. He's, he's prying into why you're asking about Nancy. He's dismissive of it because her oh, reports I, mean nothing to him. Right. Uh, I, I think that she might be... Uh, privy to something I am working on, and I was hoping to get uh, to ask the detective just a couple of questions, perhaps uh, a meeting of called, minds. She only called twice yesterday, but let me see. Flip some pages. Hines was asking about the noise complaint she made late last night. You can go talk to Hines. He points towards the desk in the bullpen. Okay. You head over there and you meet Hines, who is a very tall, very broad woman. There's a very serious look on her face. When she sees you coming over, she stands up, towering over you to greet you. Lord. Yes, sir, how can I help you? Uh, bonjour, I am Marius Ero, a private investigator, and I'll put my credentials. Uh, I was hoping to talk to uh, Detective Carter. Oh, Carter's out. How can I help you? I don't know why they sent you to me. I ain't on any Carter's cases. Hmm. Uh, there uh, is a woman, a, a Nancy from Armstead Spire. I have she heard suddenly you looks, have dealt she, with she her. She suddenly looks more interested. Uh, she is a uh, suspect in something I am working on as well, and uh, I was hoping to maybe. Uh, Pick, de pick Detective Carter's brain a little bit and uh, see if we could maybe cross the minds. 
What about specifically? Maybe I can help you if it's about enlist the apartment of your friend. Uh, it does happen to be uh, that was uh, a close personal friend of mine, Ben, uh, lived in that apartment. Have a seat. And points at the chair opposite her. I will take it. Uh, I got a, a, a message from him uh, the other day and uh, just I was unable to access his apartment so I talked to some of the neighbors and they seemed to seem that they were worried for him especially this uh, night who said that a, a patrolman came by go ahead and make two rolls subterfuge plus manipulation and then another cunning plus composure that one's for notice points. okay uh, subterfuge manipulation. Two successes plus my one enhancement for being on the case, and then you said cunning plus composure. Composure. Three successes plus one. Uh, you notice every time you mention the big case. Lots of cops give you like a cold stare, like, why are you asking about that? Mm. And Heinz notices and is trying to steer you away from it every time you do. More towards Ben and away from that case specifically. Okay. She looks around, leans forward. I like you, kid. You got a pretty face. It's been punched. I like that. It's going to level with you. Uh, you shouldn't should talk about that case around here. You don't want people mm. getting in your business, if you know what I mean. Uh, What's the code? Not. You remember that Ben left a code on the voicemail. <gasps> that little clue we dropped, no one ever needed to use until now. I remember it. You can tell. You can tell Patty how the character. Six one two. How do you remember that? Wayne pays a lot of attention. I wrote it down. <laughs> I wrote it down. <laughs> Nerd. Like there's, there's a lot of stuff I don't remember, but the little tiny here. stuff. <laughs> uh, I will just, uh, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll pull up my business card as if like, you know, we're getting close to the conclusion. I'll just write down ends. Uh, this is my extension. I'll write down 6125. You need to. You need to. You need to look up whispers. Tall, slim, dark skin, long dreadlocks. She looks around, notices at this moment no no cops are looking at you, and a strange-looking business card slips off her desk and hits the ground and slides over next to you. She announces loudly, "I need a cup of coffee. I'm glad I could help you, sir." Grabs her coffee mug and dishes under her breath. Leave. I will. Uh... I will uh, accidentally knock like a, just something small and unbreakable off her desk, and as mm -hmm. I'm bending over to pick it up and put it back, I'll grab that business card. I'm just oh. gonna tuck it in my sleeve real quick. I'm not even gonna like look at it in here. I'm just gonna tuck it in my sleeve. It's a high quality wooden business card. It has an iconified shush gesture on one side and on the other, uh, abstract lines. You are certain that's a code. <clears throat> uh, I will Which, leave. Uh, you could try to do yourself or take back your band meets either way, but it would be a uh, academics plus intellect or a subterfuge plus cunning role. Subterfuge plus cunning requiring more successes. Uh, I will get out of the building first before okay. I even attempt to do that or look at it or study it. I'll revoir Saj as I'm leaving, um, and then I'll kind of make, I'll, I'll go down a block, make sure no one's following me, and then I'll check the card. Um, I'm going to double back on myself, head back towards the group. Um, and uh, you said it was, what was the first roll? Ac academics and? Intellect. You'll need two successes. All right, we'll do that. 
because I have my plus one enhancement for being on the case. Oops, wrong thing. Five successes. Uh, you <laughs> instantly deduce it, saving the four hours of work it would have taken otherwise for the critical success. It's an Ogham alphabet cipher. It is, in fact, a physical address. Where is this physical address? Uh, Googling, Googling it shows you it's a townhouse, but you could actually research it to get more than that. Hey, that's, uh, that's five successes. Yeah, that's why he got it instantly instead of the four does that hours break my, does that, Yeah, but does that break my brain? That it's a townhouse? Oh, no. No, no, no. Do no, I get no, more yeah. awareness? Yeah, it, was, oh, it, it, it wasn't mythos-related. Yeah. It, it has mythos. to be mythos-related. When it happened to okay. Sean, you were specifically first time doing an occult role and the second time doing an occult-based role. Not my life. Yeah. <laughs> just looking at codes does not give you awareness. Okay. No. I was just making sure it didn't break my brain. Nope. <clears throat> Sean's got all that luck in this one. All right, yeah. I'll uh, see what Google can find me as I'm walking back to the group. Google just gets you that it's a townhouse, but a deep research, you can roll a academics plus intelligence skin. Two successes. Uh, okay. Two successes. It takes two hours, but it's better than the six I'm taking you originally. Uh, the paper trail of who actually owns or rents that is very obscured on purpose. You don't know why, but you know it was. And uh, unlike the townhouses around it, it has uh, strange features to it. Like bulletproof glass and windows and a reinforced front door and extra garage space for extra vehicles. You know, like you had security team. And apparently a very large and expansive basement when the construction of said basement was created, a large amount of steel was used. It's a vault. Mm -hmm. You think you can make the logical deduction you may have gotten the address to Whisper's house. At his vault. Mm -hmm. Or their vault, I apologize. Is that address the same as the address that Gilman gave us? I Gilman gave that. you the address to the auction, which is being held in the same neighborhood, which you can figure, I'll just give it to you now, you can say you figured it out when you got back together, but it's not the same house. Oh, okay. Yeah, imagine Whispers doesn't want to do business on top of their vault. Right. All right, uh... I guess I'll get the team together and be like, let's go pay Whispers a visit before the auction. Got a plan for that, or are you just going to show up at dinner time? Hey. <laughs> no, nah, we won't be mean. We won't show up at dinner time. We'll show up, like, right before. <laughs> That's rude. I mean, is there... Knock, knock, knock. Six guns come out. We didn't want to be rude and interrupt dinner, but... <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, if we wanted to get into the townhouse, shouldn't we wait until the auction starts? That way, sure, they but then there's be no there. reason to because the painting will be at the auction and not in the vault. Right now, it's probably in the vault. Well, we could wait until just before the auction and get the as it's being transported. Yeah, that's I, a good I, idea. I assume that the safety of the transport, though, would be multiple vehicles, dummy leads, false time of when we'll actually leave the house, um, high security. Whereas I doubt Whispers thinks that six scions will just show up to their door the day before and be like, yo, let's have a talk. Sometimes the most in your face option is the least expected. Because when someone builds walls in a vault, it's they get that false sense of security of like no one would ever dare try, no one would ever dare try, and then someone dare tries, and then it falls. Also, I forgot to tell you, did the cool thing you got with your five successes. Why it took you so much less time? You immediately figured out the trick. It's not just an Ogden cipher. They also reversed it. The letters had to be read right to left, top to bottom, like Arabic. And you were like, I got this. 
otherwise, even once you figured out it was auto it would take it hours. Why is this working? Just so you feel cool for your five successes. Feel fucking cool. But yeah, that sounds like a band vote. Is this deed because this is now a band deed? Uh, stop more people from dying from the painting. Uh, are you going to break and enter? Or are you going to try to intercept? Or are you going to try to crash the auction? I mean, if the guy's auctioning the painting, he probably just wants money. So we could show up and be like, let's make a deal, dude. You could actually, now that you know the secret code to the auction, you can call and inquire about details. Hmm. That's a good plan. Yeah, I, I don't see this Whispers character as being a totally unreasonable person. Like, it, I don't think they have, it's like, they, they vomited at the original crime scene. Like, they obviously don't have a stomach for hardcore violence. So... Like, I don't think this is, I, I don't think the horrors it unleashes upon innocence is, like, their bag. So that was the the, co the fake cop that grew up at the, uh... Which, right, the fake cop which was, was whispers. Whispers, whispers. Yep. The fake cop is the person who went to Harold's, is the person yep. who took the painting from Ben, yep. is Whisper, is the one that's ha having the auction. Those are all the same person. Yeah, but wasn't there another person at Harold's? Nope, nope, that was mm -hmm. that was whispers. A, a real cop. Oh no no. Yeah, I, a real cop was there when you. Was, they had nothing. Oh, to do that with was it. just like. Yeah. Like that was there just, just, there just happened to be a cop uh, there. I thought yeah. when he, I thought when he read the description of the video, it was, we couldn't see the, we couldn't see the the fake cop going to the, mannequins, and then in, like there was somebody else there that you couldn't nope. see at all. No, if I remember person. correctly, you said that there was a was real it? cop that came in with donuts, before this. And then left, and then uh, whispers came in. Whispers is everything that's happened after your buddy died. So all, all thinking, them thinking maybe just calling him up and saying, "So then it is again." We we know that uh, you're selling this painting. We don't want to use it for bad purposes. We just want to take it off your hands early. Here's exorbitant amount of money from our dear friend Malcolm. I think that conversation is better held in person, though, than over the phone. But do you, you have really to call want... the number you were given to try to set up an in-person meeting either way? Yeah, because you really want to just show up at his doorstep and say, yeah, we're here to gently buy this painting off of you, rather than kinda. setting up a meeting and that's saying... A, that's kind uh, of Whispers, power play. Whispers yeah. isn't just a dude like does a thing. It's not a dude at all, but does a thing. Whispers is a person who uh, has, like, an auction society. He does these regularly. This is not special for this painting. So, like, and if you want to try to figure things out about the auction, you need to call the staff of the auction. And, and then you'd have to get through them to try to get to him. And Whispers obviously is a very private person. I mean, they have an entire artifact just to make sure that nobody knows what they look like. No, if you show up at his house with guns, their house with guns... You may be able to force them to tell you what you want to know. But if you don't want to do that, yeah, you need to call the auction house. We just super power play them. Like, we know who you are. We know where you live. We know you have this thing. And we can and will find you again if necessary. So let's well, just all walk away as friends and resolve this amicably. Let's try calling the auction house, learning what we can and then you might be able to use that as leverage against Whispers. That way we can hopefully start this whole entire thing amicably rather than, hi, we have the upper hand. Who's going to call? Uh, I suppose Lena can. She's an art thief, so she's probably dealt with art auctions before and knows the lingo. Intellect. True. I'm sorry, uh, cunning plus resolve. Doo -doo -doo. Only Marius and Lena would have gotten this role. Yay, I'm special. Mm -hmm. Next, click persuasion. Okay, there we go. Ooh, four successes. Yeah, I shouldn't use this phone. 
I shouldn't call the shady illegal auction house from my cell phone. I'm an art thief, I know better. <laughs> yep. A phone it is. <laughs> yeah, or, or burner, uh, whatever you want to do, yeah. Yeah, just grab a burner phone. Marius so looks at the $10 waste, just like, you could have spent a quarter on a payphone, but okay. Lena giggles, I could also it's a $50 burner. <laughs> That's a major burner expense for, for Marius, okay? <laughs> $50 burner? <burps? laughs> what are you doing, man? Killing your minutes. This isn't the 90s, man. So you call no, it. just the 50, like, the buying the phone would be the expense. Not even the fact that it has, like, just, why, why do that? I... Rubbing, I can't rub hey, two phones exist. together over here, man. Oh, um, oh, you know, Marius, when all of this is over, we're gonna have a nice talk. About what? How one day I'm going to have to? Um, someone is going to hire me to find you, art thief. <laughs> Probably, but also like, okay. let me help you become a better person. I'm sorry. You think is it money equals better, better? equals rich? Mm. Mm. Well, Lena, just when I thought we were uh, two peas in the pod, uh, I don't know. I just wanted to see you successful, that's all. I think we have different evaluations of uh, success. Yes, but you should be able to buy a burner phone when you need one, and not complain about the cost, that's all. But the payphone, it's... <laughs> It just, it makes more sense, no? Oh, we'll, we'll have this conversation later. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah. Um. You call the number, mm -hmm. and there's a click, and then a nondescript voice says, code, which you got, so you give it. Mm -hmm. Accepted, how can we help you? Um, yes, I am an interested customer, and I've got... Which item? Um, well, I don't know the lot number, but it is, uh, painting? Dreamlands. That, uh, Artist? Uh, Dreamlands. Artist unknown, I believe. Pickman. It was, uh, Car P uh, yeah, Pickman. Oh, oh um, yes, yeah. by Mr. Pickman. Ah, uh, yes. Starting bid on Pickman's painting will be five million euros. Five million euros? My goodness, now, I've never actually heard of this artist before, so, um, could you tell me a little bit about this Mr. Pickman, and what makes this painting so valuable? Uh, there's a word for that, and I can't remember what it is when they read down the history of an item. Provenance. Would you like me to read you the provenance? Yes, please. Excellent. Um, Richard Upton Pigman was a renowned artist in Boston a very long time ago, about a century. At the time, he was very avant-garde. He was raved about with the depths of his imagination and the surreal realism of his paintings, all of which were horrible and grotesque. Uh, he documented in his paintings all manner of his nightmares for portrayals. His works were so disturbing that eventually the Boston Art Club disowned him, but his value, value, that only made the value of his work improve. Disappeared for several years, and uh, disappeared for almost a decade, and then uh, reappeared to unveil his masterwork, which is this painting, The Dreamlands. It's his most realistic and unnerving to date. At the time, the Boston Art Club was having internal upheavals and did not appreciate the masterwork for what it was. He took the painting back to his studio and disappeared, never to be seen from again. The landlord took possession of the studio, sold off all the paintings, including The Dreamlands, where it sat in a pawn shop until it was finally rediscovered. It was rediscovered in April of 1972 and purchased by Sarah Levy, where it was then uh, appraised by the, uh, how they would say that, by the finest of art appraisers. I'm sure there's a wording for that, too. 
Uh, and it was valued at uh, five million dollars. Uh, however, due to the circumstances of how uh, Mr. Whispers or how Whispers acquired this painting, we have lowered the price somewhat for the opening bid. I see. Um. Would it be possible to arrange for an advance showing of this painting? I mean, un under whatever the security protocols you prefer, of course, um, I would simply like the opportunity to examine it before I decide if it's worth bidding on. I'm sure you understand. I'm afraid that will not be possible. Oh, what a shame. Will we be able to see it before the auction begins? It will be unveiled... 30 minutes prior to when bidding begins on that item during the auction. At which time you will be able to appraise it, but only from a distance of 10 yards. Um, why, why all the security, if you don't mind my asking? Because it's worth 5 million euros. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair, I suppose. Um, a shame your auction house cannot provide better security for the comfort of your patrons, but that's certainly not my business. Shame. Uh, Lena will look up, is there anything else we want to know? What else is being auctioned? Oh, yes, um, well, uh, in case we decide not to bid on the painting, um, what other similar objects might we end up with as a consolation prize? Would you like me to send you a co copy of the brochure? Oh, yes, please. Uh, a digital file transfer takes place. Oh, they did get your number, even though you dialed as a block number. They got it anyways. I'm so glad I called from the party. See, we could do this on a payphone. Could do this on a payphone. <laughs> <laughs> any, other any other questions we'll have to wait for the day of the auction, I'm afraid, where you can speak to... Whispers, they uh, will be happy to provide you with any information they can that will further. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, thank you help so you. much. Thank you so much for your time. Um, do you have Whispers contact information? They prefer not to be contacted directly. You can contact us for any needs. All right, then. I'll do that. Um, have a good evening, then. Tells you one more thing, it's not a he or a she, whispers is a they. Okay. Um, not just mythos related, prefers to be identified as they. So noted, um, thank you for that. So, the PDF you get. Yeah, hang up the phone, Let, let's look at this file. Two very ancient looking books with hard to pronounce titles. Uh, a very ornate jewel container that seems to have some kind of strangely colored and very shiny trapezohedron inside. A really weird looking cylinder full of fluid that contains what looks like a human brain with weird wires coming out of it. Something that looks like a sci-fi prop from an old movie, like a ray gun. It's all mythos artifacts. So, I could call upon my arcane calculus right now. Uh, I could uh, try and provoke a vision right now. Or I could pretty much uh, access everyone's group gestalt and see if there's a clue. Uh, that we might have missed. I'm, I'm for it. Okay. Yeah, uh, sure. Alright, I'll go for Disturbing Visions. Because why not? That sounds like fun. Read it to us. Alright, Disturbing Visions. Cost, free, duration, instant, subject, self, action, simple. By reading scripts from Mythos Realms or inscribing arcane geometries, you receive a vision from the Mythos. The vision is a compulsion, something the gods want you to do for them, with the promise of a benefit afterward. The request replaces the character's short-term deed with something achievable within the session. 
Disturbing visions should only be usable once per session and should be a minor effort requiring a scene's worth of activity and at least one successful roll. The exact request often doesn't make any sense whether the deed is esoteric or simply strange and is left to the story guide's discretion. This typically results in characters stumbling across disparate and far-flung cults and rites until a full and final picture is revealed. Once you've completed the mission, gain one awareness and one legend. The vision has shredded away the veil, enabling you to see any being touched by the mythos. The vision you receive is of a guy dressed very smartly in 20 style. Very nice fedora. Uh, first painting some pictures of what are very startingly, startingly, startingly realistic monsters of horrific kinds. And then there's a time jump and he's dressed in much poorer clothing and his house is in a state of disrepair and he's furiously painting on a giant painting and it's not of a creature it's of a place like a panorama and he's surrounded by shadowy bipedal figures with glowing red eyes whispering to him and then the, the division jumps forward again and you see yourself yanking the cover off the painting and getting out of the way so a crowd of people can see it in all of its glory and then the vision ends okay your god isn't nice. No. Uh. Alright. So, I think we have to let the auction proceed. I think it's very important that quite a lot of people see this painting. So that they Why can get that? eaten? Wouldn't that just turn them all crazy? The answer is yes, whether or not you tell them that, though. So. Uh, well, I, I'm not really in, in the habit of telling uh, my god no. Um, I like being uneaten. You think to preference. yourself, though, what if it wasn't me revealing it to the auction? What if it's revealing it to my cult? What if it's enlightenment? I... I, I do believe that the painting would be more enlightening than consumptive. I mean, I, I would be perfectly happy just showing it to um, my personal followers, not in an entire auction house. But that would um, certainly require coming up with oh, many millions of dollars. So, like, when they put something for auction, it goes on a easel yes i know that word or something like that and then like everybody sees it and they raise their little paddles and they're like i want that for four million or something like that won't they all be looking at it and they'll all go crazy and they'll eat each other's faces off and then like the whole town eats its face off oh, i don't think they'll go crazy you realize lena in relation to jumping back a second Mm -hmm. If you decide to translate that vision and show it to my people, the only $5 million, you can steal it from the vault. That's what you do, after all. That's true. It's art. You're a thief. <laughs> um, well, yes, we could steal it, and um, this wouldn't be my first rodeo, so to speak, as far as that's going on. Ooh, a heist. I love heist. Can we do a heist? No, wait, I did that. I wrong. really wouldn't imagine you being down for a heist. Well, yes. Is, uh, how many of the heists have you done? I believe Kurt enjoys the idea of the heist. I don't know why you gotta say that so condescending like. Well, everyone always has their first heist. Bucket list, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that being the cause of your bucket list. Sure, but, I mean, don't any of you right now say you didn't watch Ocean's Eleven or like, I totally want to do that. And I still totally want to do that. So we should totally do that. Right, well, you do have a good point in that um, this is probably not fit for civilian consumption. You know, uh, I feel like I've lived uh, a long... this... Go, uh, go ahead. I I've lived a long time. I've Never done a heist. This could be interesting. Let's see, two bucket lists. Boom. Oh, I was on board t 
to uh, extract the painting uh, before the phone call, so I, I'm on this. But I think uh, now... Thank you, detective. Uh, yes. Uh, you might not like the next words out of my mouth. Uh, I think now is a great time to uh, perhaps uh, reveillon what we uh, our, our plans are for the painting after we get it. Uh, well, if it comes to me, I will display it to my cult. Yes, this seems very troubling uh, to me. Perhaps, uh, what, what, oh, what, do, well, what does the rest uh, of the group think would be a good course of action? Well, if, if you have a problem with it, I would be delighted to arrange a meeting between you and Albatron so you can work out those differences. Well, considering we don't really know what exactly the painting does, other than possibly tearing people to shreds and sucking them inside. <laughs> if that's the case, then perhaps the bottom of the ocean. I mm. think that either yeah, bottom of the ocean as well. Mm. See, uh, as one close to the ocean, uh, I can attest many things and still find it down there. I think it should either be burned or go to Lena. I mean, who better to guard a really horrible and evil piece of art than uh, someone who's experienced in dealing with the hard-to-attain art pieces? Thank you, Malcolm. Drop it to the bottom of a well and then seal that well off. So someone can discover it later? That's a great idea. And then we buried the well. How does one bury a well? Well, that's a deep subject, you see. Well, yeah. oh. you know, I, I can't believe no, that possibly we... once we do obtain this painting, a lot of our priorities are going to change. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So that is why I want to talk about this now. I in order, to, in order, in order, in order to uh, <laughs> avoid the inevitable, uh, how they say, uh, standoff. Well, half my cult are dolphins, so I mm -hmm. think they'll be okay. Wait, dolphins are in a cult? I knew it. Oh, well, you, you, you should meet my dolphins. Damn. Maria is very confused. Wait, are these actual dolphins, or are these just what you're calling your followers? Oh, no, flipper dolphins. See? Very Hitchhiker's Guide. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all the fish. Well, it seems like we're just going to have to worry about that road when we come upon it. <clears throat> right, so we're heisting though, right? Like, that's still a thing? Still heisting? Yes. I heard at least two yes. solid votes for that. Apparently heisting. We're... <clears throat> Apparently. Heisting. Yep. Heisting carried. What's your plan? I well, bow to the expertise of Lena. Uh, based on the player's knowledge of heist movies, uh, Lena would first want to get a good layout uh, for the building. Um, how can we get in? How can we get out? And then what <coughs> sort of vault might we be facing? And how can we get the vault open? Might, might I also throw this out here. We are going to have to do this in broad daylight. But would, could we not... Why can't we just steal it you from, don't. Like, You can go at 3 a.m. if you want. Yeah. Why well, can't we just steal I it thought, from whispers? I thought the, the auction's happening tonight. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Okay. Doesn't remember the auction's tomorrow, but remembers the fucking code from the voice note in the first <laughs> section. Yep. What? <laughs> Okay, I couldn't remember the uh, the room number. Uh, go ahead and give me a uh, technology plus cunning roll. Anybody, whoever's best at it. Uh, to get get the blueprints, you're gonna have to steal them from some database somewhere. Six. I'm at six for that. Yeah, not not that sounds pretty good. Not me. Okay. 
three successes. Three was what you needed. Um, the upstairs of the house has four bedrooms. The downstairs consists of a foyer, a sitting room, dining room, kitchen, and a library. Uh, very large library. Such, such things go in a house like this. Uh, the basement does not have any marked entrance to it. Like, there's nothing on the blueprint that shows how you get it. There's no, like, stairs with a door to the basement. Okay. So, obviously, there's a secret door somewhere. Uh, basement itself has a, a large open area with a stage. So, apparently, they do actually do auctions there sometimes. Just not this one. Mm. Um, there's a small area down there for preparing drinks for guests, alcohol. There is a couple smaller rooms that are probably offices of some kind. Probably also where the security room is. And then the vault itself, which is actually larger than the house and extends under the backyard. Uh, hold on one second and see what you get. There's no layout of the vault or the area leading to the vault, like the hallway. But it's not just bigger than the yard, it's triple the size of the yard. Like, whatever that is, it's huge. It's bigger than the house. Hmm. So, we could try getting into the house and finding whatever secret door is there or we could try tunneling into the yard that would probably be difficult in a more different way tunneling in through the yard won't work because coming in through the top you don't have what you need to do that getting it that fast would be difficult you oh, can't just get some dynamite you would need specialized drilling equipment <laughs> Sure, it's they reinforced. probably noticed that too. <laughs> yeah, I might be able to be of some assistance. Oh, I apologize. There is an actual list of what else is being auctioned. I'll give you that too, because you asked. A statue of a frog carved from solid jade with ruby eyes and engravings across its back. A gold Roman second century A.D. ring with an alabaster cameo. An engraved Celtic rectangular shield, third century B.C.E piece of music of which only the first six notes are given in an original Leonardo da Vinci sketch. Huh. The hmm. serious crime auctioneer. <laughs> <clears throat> and are those all in his vault right now? Yes. Oh, we're taking... His eyes are shining. <laughs> I'll share. We'll sell it on the black market and share with all of you. So do we need to build a replica of this vault first before we go to that vault? I don't think we're going to do that in like 24 hours. We don't yeah. have the time. <laughs> Neither the time, nor the materials, nor even the necessary intelligence. Plus you don't have By a layout of the vault. I mean, Your blueprint is just a big open empty, sp big open, empty space the size of a football field. Right. By intelligence, I meant information. We are all very smart people here. So when are we going to do this? Well, I suppose after Whispers goes to bed. Can anyone if help them along there? If they go to there? bed. Yes, can anyone help them along there? Knock him out. Drug him. Then... I have no abilities there. I'm not particularly stealthy. Well, I suppose we're stabbing them then. I mean, I could probably, like, play them a song. They'd be like, oh man. That song is awesome. 
I could probably do it for like a few hours. Yeah, if if they're already asleep, I can keep them asleep. I can presuming they sleep. I could collect their soul. <coughs> Technically, uh, that once I I hate to be the uh, moral compass for the group, but once again, uh, this whispers person does not seem entirely unreasonable. I do not think we should murder and or steal souls. I unless... give it back. I think they would be less for the experience, perhaps. Doubtful that they'd know anything was going on. I mean, this body uh, didn't. All right. How, how about this? Um, we'll show up to their house two, three in the morning. Uh, if they're asleep, Maria will keep them asleep. If they're not, Kurt will play his magic song. Uh, and if things go incredibly and horribly sideways, um, Malcolm is our last resort. Groovy. Is this acceptable problems? Flaws? Oh, I'm fine with this. <clears throat> Sounds like you're good with your plan. Yeah. Which means... We're going to take a quick seven-minute station identification break. We're going to break into this vault. Aren't Don't go mean? anywhere, audience. We'll be back at about 1037 Eastern.
Yeah, we're back. They're gonna try to steal a painting. What could go wrong? Nothing. It is now 1 a.m. Question mark. Or 1 a.m. You are one street down, looking at the building, at the townhouse. It is at the end of a cul-de-sac. So you're mm -hmm. not one street down. You're at the other end of the street looking at it. It's a very large garage and big townhouse, and big fenced-in yard. No, uh, uh, no activity outside of the building. All the curtains are drawn, so you don't know if the lights are. <clears throat> oh, you're muted, Lena. Thank you. Uh, well, we could knock on the door to see if he's awake, but that might wake him up. Can anybody like? See through walls or something? Or like turn invisible? I feel like it'd be really useful. Nope. No. But I do have the ability to raise shadows. Ooh. Well, I, I I could use this as the moment to decide whether or not it's smart to wake him up and ask him about things or not and use my ask the story teller for is that what you guys want me to do real quick should we wake him up and actually talk to him or should we just steal the painting mm. I mean, it's all the side of thievery but I mean we you know? are here at yeah we're here at one o'clock in the morning <laughs> 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 well, if his sleep Some, schedule is as fucked as mine, he's still awake. <laughs> it, some, somebody mentioned knocking the, <clears throat> on the door, so I mean... I'm but assuming you're not going like... to knock on the door. I'm yeah, gonna knock assume, on the door I'm gonna, to see if he's awake. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume somebody's like, knock on the door, and Lena's already halfway to the back of the house. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he's, not, if he's sleeping, that'll wake him up. Um... Let's start with the group stealth roll. Whoever has the worst stealth roll for the group. If any of you have a knack or purview that will boost that from said person, you may use it. I have a question. Can I retcon something just so I can use a cool power? Sure. Okay. I have the gate and key. You may spend a momentum to open a portal from one location to another as long as it's through a little portal, door, window, manhole, etc. To anywhere else of your choosing, including Terra Incognita. You must have visited the location you are moving to for the portal to work. Could I have somehow gone to this guy's house and been like, Hey, I hear you got like some cool stuff you're going to auction. I'm going to see it tomorrow. Can I, oh, like, see that it you can't retcon because they would not have let you. Oh, damn. Okay. It's a good thought, though. <clears throat> uh, what are we calling a stealth here? Athletics or... Subterfuge plus dexterity. Okay. Um... Uh, I have Master <laughs> of the World. Uh, mm -hmm. While well, inside of a field, you may define up to three points of enhancement or complications that are readily apparent, um, but not obvious to other observers. Uh, they must conform to the features of the film, uh, of the field. Uh, example given, it makes sense for Shotgun to be behind a bar, but not a rocket launcher. <laughs> go yeah, the bars well, you could use there. that so that they just have... Incredible luck where they step. Yeah, so uh, Lena will pick out the, um, you know, patterns on the grass from being watered and be <clears> like, oh, that it's shallow there, it's deep there. Here's where you want to step. Does um, that require you to imbue or spend either legend or uh, awareness? It, do it doesn't say. Is it um, Mac? And I'm pretty good at copying that down. Uh, yes, it is a knack. Okay, if it's a knack, they usually either have a dice roll or it's just work. Okay, cool. So no good. dice roll given. Neat. Um, and Whoever then has would... that worst roll gets plus three enhancements. Yeah, um, could I also further edit the scene a little bit to be like, Oh, I recognize those fake rocks that you hide your keys in from Home Depot. <laughs> that actually tells you none of that is present, but it does tell you something interesting. Everything is fake. 
<clears throat> it's designed to look lived in. It's not. No. Oh. So he's probably not even home. That's helpful. Or he lives in the vault. They. But yes. They. Alright, well, I have a total of three because I only have decks. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, have I have athletics. I don't have subterfuge. Yeah, Anybody same. have less than three dice? Oh, I have three as well. In what? Oh. What's the rule? Subterfuge plus it's dexterity. Dex, yeah. Oh, I'm really good at that. So. Oh. I have yeah. I have five dice in that. Uh, I have one in subterfuge and three in dexterity. So not you. And I think Ever's got higher too. Yeah, I've got a good yeah. roll for stealthing. So for the two of you that have three, who has the lower cunning? I have two. I also have two. <laughs> I would presume the worst one for the stealth would actually be... Who uh, had the uh, lowest composure? Three. Four. To me. I was going to say Maria anyway, because... <laughs> I mean, I would presume that a four in athletics would give me some capability of being a little quiet. Not necessarily. Eh. Being in shape doesn't mean you're sneaky. Yeah. So yes, Maria, you're the, you, you're the worst. You are the weakest link. All right. So <laughs> three enhancements. Is that three bonus dice? Nope. You've got to make at least one success on your own. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Maybe not. Again. <clears throat> yeah, real dice. He's good. Well, mm -hmm. I'll click it again and try. It doesn't go up. Uh, no. Okay. Click right, here we go. Here we go. Uh, two successes. <laughs> Five total. Uh, not a natural critical success, but still a critical success. You're ninjas. The guards do not notice you. There are two entrances, both of which are electronically sealed. So no matter which way you go, and we'll say you went to the side entrance, uh, you're going to have to break in, which is going to be... Uh, well, Malcolm has a cool power. I was about to say, some of us can just decay walls. Yeah, but that'll probably set off alarms. But still, you could do it. The, I won't stop you. The wall itself is alarmed. The door frame thing. that you're going to break. Rolled. Why wouldn't we just do a wall, though, that's not actually Because you don't know how the security system works. It's your call if you want to try to destroy the house. Okay, so you're telling me that this guy has alarms on his I'm walls? telling you that a guy who probably has private security in his house is going to notice it collapse a wall. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't think it's too far-fetched to think he has wall security if he has eldritch artifacts in his basement. I mean... And he's a, they is it, are a scion. And mm -hmm. it's also possible that they have like um, uh, temperature sensing alarms. However, so, you could wreck the, the wall if you want. Sorry, Rachel. Oh no, just like... it's a, not that the wall's gone, but now there's cold night air coming into the house. I feel like also this thing's true. gotta go to pot real fast. We might as well just accelerate it on our own terms. No faith. Okay. You know what? Uh. Kurt's gonna hang back and just like air guitar. So short of using powers, the roll is still the air guitar. I just had it. Uh, technology plus cunning. Wait, no, that's not it. That's something else. When the heck's the breaking roll? Hold on. Breaking and entering. Technology plus dexterity. Three successes will be required. Uh, I have six dice on this one. I do as well. Anybody got anything that can boost that? Uh... Roll it! Okay. Teamwork. One of you can roll first to support the other. Decide who's the main and who's the assistant. 
Uh, do you have a preference? Uh, since you, I mean, you are the breaker and enterer, I will assist. Okay. You roll first, Maria. <clears throat> so is uh, Dex and technology, correct? Correct. Three. Nice. Wait, nice. why did that roll seven? Maybe you have a bonus click somewhere. But you can have some enhancements. Go ahead and roll. Okay. Uh, one success, but I got ten again. Do I need to click that, or...? It depends. How many did it roll more than did it explode automatically? You can count the number um, of dice. No, it... Yeah, it, it, it rolled don't... seven. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's weird math. I don't know how to read it. <laughs> uh, yeah, each number's a die, so if it rolled one more than your normal, it exploded. So, one success plus assist enhancements is enough to bypass the security. Yay! Technically, it's one more enhancement that you need, but since it was an assist, it doesn't carry over. You okay. bypass the lock without setting off any alarms. You can now enter the house. The side door opens into the kitchen. Uh, the fridge is full of fresh ingredients and leftovers. There's a spice rack on the far wall full of bursting. And the cupboards are stocked with non-perishables. Flour, sugar, nuts, dried lentils, beans. Apparently, when the house is used, somebody likes to cook. But it's quiet, and it's dark. Farther in the house, you can hear quiet mutterings. People walking on carpet. Yeah. But, you know, it's no activity. <clears throat> well, if I were a secret door, I would probably be in the library, like any booby trope I've ever seen. I think this is definitely Malcolm's time to shine. <laughs> I have not totally been waiting to use this ability this whole time and very excited <laughs> about it. So. <laughs> awesome. Um, the ability in question is uh, the innate power for journeys. Always know a back passage, secret route, or hidden portal to get where you're going. If secret door or hidden passage exists, you find it immediately without having to roll, unless it's obscured by magic. So, am I gonna have to roll? I don't think it's obscured by magic, but I'm checking. The secret door is in the library, but I don't think the power tells you how to access the secret door, does it? If it's not, just open the handle. Just finding it, I think, is... It's in the library. Yay. Well done, though. Yes. I've been dying to use that ever since I read this character. Because now you're only going to need to make one cutting plus subterfuge roll. Best in group can do this one to bypass the guards instead of one roll every time you enter into rooms. That actually helped a lot. <laughs> mm. so there's six uh, of you, and if you stumble across the guards, you're not going to hide. My cunning plus subterfuge is eight. Oh man, mine's seven. <laughs> you can still let Malcolm roll it if you want. Yeah. Malcolm doesn't get to roll many dice. It's it's the Malcolm show right now. Go for it. <laughs> They'd be following you anyways because you know where to go. Uh, I feel bad now. <laughs> Malcolm, it. this is your moment. Sweet. Lena oh, and Marius will have no problem sharing since they did most of the rolls last week. Mm -hmm. What do we get? What do we get? Uh, three. three. Oh, sorry. Showing the camera and I missed it. Three successes. Yes. Uh, one carries over to your next use of sneaking if necessary. Because you only need two. Uh, the library is also lived in. Books are an odd mix of reference material and fantasy novels in varying stages of use. Uh, give me a... Uh, Technology plus cunning roll. You'll need two successes for this. Is that anybody or everybody? Anybody. Doesn't matter who, but just one person. At a time, anyways. If you fail, right. we'll go down the line. Not I, said the PI. Six. All right, yeah. I'll roll. I got five. One success. Uh, we got that carryover <clears throat> from the last one, right? 
Ever has, specifically to Ever. Ah. Well, no, I'll let Ever gift it. It could be a group enhancement, why not? So yes, it'd be two, which is what you needed. Uh, there's a tall orange armchair near the bay window that is very well worn. Not only is it more frequently used than any other piece of furniture, but breaks the flow of the room. Its angle is weird, and everything else has a grid layout. So, Lena walks over there, plops down in it, and is like, I like this chair, and leans back, click, past the slides open in the library, in the, in the bookshelf nice. next to her. her. Uh -huh. uh, and Lena will not say anything, but will make a very dramatic bow. <laughs> Um, the chair actually, uh, sinks into the floor when you sit in it, too, and lean back. Like, mm -hmm. it depresses the whole thing. So, yeah, it's a staircase going down. So, am I taking a chair right down? <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay. The chair just sinks into like a panel on the floor. Okay. It's down about that far. And it's noticeable, but it's not. It, the panel slides open in a bookshelf, revealing a spiral staircase going down. Uh, Lena will remain in the chair until everyone else has gone through, just in case getting out of the chair closes it, which would make a lot of sense. Okay. Um, you get up and go down. And you realize that was a good idea, but no, this actually closes from below. But since you were thinking about it, I don't make you roll to close it so the guards don't notice. The secret door is open when you get all get to the bottom. Huzzah! Yeah. Which, which means you avoided all the guards without a fight. There are no guards down here. Everything is pitch black down here. We did it! Um... Yeah, this uh, opens up into a hallway. There's two rooms that you saw in your blueprint on either side of the hallway. One is closed and locked, which you can see through the little window that's set in the door. That's the security room. There's a guy in there, but all the like all the cameras you can see are upstairs. It's weird. And he doesn't pay attention to you peering through his little tiny window. Because he's doing something you should do when you're at work. Watching YouTube. They're gonna they're gonna find that porn when they search that mm, computer. Well. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean The other room is storage closet. Secret, with supplies. This is what we were talking about earlier. The other room is part storage closet, part uh mini bar. Also closed and locked, no one's in there. And then it opens up into a very wide open area, which you can see is already set up for tomorrow. Rows of chairs and then a dais with a podium and then easels and other platforms to show stuff off. Like stands and whatnot. Wait, I thought the auction wasn't here. It's set up like it should be. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Maybe there is going to be a secret faint later. We didn't have to deal with that. <laughs> I mean, that explains all the fresh food in the not lived in house. Hmm. Or, you know, maybe there's some mythos shit about to happen. <laughs> Oh no. That doesn't <laughs> sound right. Oh no. No, uh, everyone's just gonna walk in through a doorway and end up in the vault. And then at the very other end of that room, there's a closed and steel sealed heavy steel door with no window. And a digital passcode keypad next to it. Which also includes some kind of sensor. Could be eyeballs, could be thumb, can't tell from here. Maria will look at Malcolm and say, shall you or shall I? Hmm. Ladies first. Good old chaos. <laughs> <What's> done? <laughs> I will, uh, I will <clears throat> touch the electronic pad. And see if it malfunctions. Does this one require investment? No, it does not. It is innate. In that case, I'm going to make you roll dice. Oh. 
uh, roll subterfuge plus manipulation. Oh, because I'm See good how at well that. you channel your chaos to a specific purpose. All right. Since, should... since the since the keypad can't roll, you have to. This should be three. Uh, the last time I rolled with subterfuge, it rolled zero dice. So we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how okay. this is. Is there any way I can help? I have the innate power that where is a I can critical failure. Where I can sap energy. I can drain any battery within a short range, short out an electrical outlet. So that yours doesn't need to aid. Yours can work all on its own. Is yours a knack or a power, a purview? It's an innate power from the innate order power. of purview. Which means you don't gotta do nothing for yours. Okay. So. Maria walks up there and is like, "I got this." Chaos. <laughs> and then you actually see the you actually see the keypad goes from green to a deeper, richer green. You actually secured the door even more. Yay! <laughs> like you you Success. hear more lock you hear more <laughs> locks <laughs> click into place. Thunk 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 thunk. So then. Marius walks over and is like, "Look at Maria, wrong kind of chaos." <laughs> and then, what do you do? What's your, what's your? Dash? I just, I literally just touch the the full keypad, kind of electrical, the whole the setup, whatever. And you just see, at first, it looks like a little spark electricity, but then it just turns into drops of water, kind of be like sucked out of it, almost like, you know, bringing a sponge. It actually makes the noise too. And the lights go out, <laughs> and then you just hear the snap sound of locks going off. And the door doesn't move, but you can hear the locks release. I will do the whole like. I'm hoping it has like the spin spin handle on it, so I'll you know spin the spin handle, open it up, step to the side. On review, mes amis. It does have the spin handle, but you also realize, uh, above the door. Little t tiny red light flashing now, because you know, when security doors go offline, it alerts things. <laughs> mm. You look inside and you see tunnels. You weren't expecting that, and I don't mean straight tunnels. They twist and turn. You can see it even from here. It's like a narrow tunnel walking in, and a round area, and then branching tunnels all at weird different angles. Uh, passages lead in all directions, and the walls are built out of reflective materials so like looking down the hallway you're not sure which way it actually twists because it's reflecting on itself creating an endless mind-boggling illusion creating a labyrinth sweet Fun. you should probably hurry up and get in there uh-huh yes mm -hmm. y'all move inside close yep. the door behind us yep. close the door so you all rush in there Hold up, hold up, time out, pause. Marius will actually debate this with you guys. Uh, so if we close this behind us and they lock the door, then we are shit out, shit out of luck. So you all move inside, and Marius is like, hold on, don't lock the door yet. It's, and uh, you debate for like 30 seconds. Vault doors and generally see, don't open from the inside. Exactly. You, you, see, you see three guards skid around the corner. Look. <laughs> One of them hits a button on his watch and the door slams shut. Oh. <laughs> wow. The parfait! <laughs> and oh, you hear all the locks go and engage. And yes, there's no pad on this side of the door. Oh. Well, if uh, the clues that we've so far managed to obtain... Um, mean anything we might be able to get out through and painting or if we find another door and we'll let's hope smolder a little bit at the closed door and then just spin around my heel and be like there is only one way to go Arius says there's only one way to go it looks like the five tunnels <laughs> meaning deeper of <laughs> The English and Z, Z exactly so, subs your words. In Scion, rather than uh, role playing wandering endlessly, there's a cool thing you can do called surveying, which is in the origin book. It's a way. It's one of the many cool ways this game lets you 
uh, do a, an investigation phase, finding clues with analysis, tracking, interrogation, surveying, or research. Uh, surveying is for when what you need is right in front of you, you just need to be cunning enough to get it. So, this is going to be, start with, wait, hold on. You do not need to cherish. So, this is navigation, which means there's going to be five rolls, one per round. Only one person can roll, but one other person can aid. I'm sorry, one person can roll, but you can all try to aid. One enhancement for a successful aid roll. If you're not trained in survival, no helping aid. The roll is survival mm. plus cunning. Required success for each of the rolls. I'm out. I'm, I'm out. out. Survival. Okay. I, I, also I have, have no survival. I have I a am, total yeah. of three dice with all of that, and I have survival. <laughs> no survival. I am. I am useless. However, I am going we, to. Do we only have one survival person? <laughs> Is that why I just heard? Yeah, and That's I have I just a total of three. <laughs> We're you know gonna be stuck I, I think, here forever. I, I think this is where I'm going to use my power and ask the DM. Uh, what is the way to go where we're not going to get lost? Uh, that won't actually apply to this. I apologize. This one you got to play out. I. Uh, However, then I will I'm let you use that. I will l let you use that to not get hopelessly lost. However, you still have to roll because you might trick the traps along the way. Um. Oh, good. Can I? <laughs> can I aid in another way? How? I am going to imbue one awareness. To do? And create a bunch of shadow mooks. And send them down the passages. And have them Can you communicate back. with them? Uh, 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 shadow minions obey their master implicitly and cannot sway or taken over even by someone else. But they can be trap dummies. My, uh... They have the my Tyler instinct is to tell you most of them get lost. But I'm not going to be that mean. Yes, you can help that way. You can get a free plus one enhancement to uh, Devin's character. All right. Yeah. So Maria so closes sorry. her eyes and anybody opens else them. got a fun. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh no. Go ahead. No. It's all right. Anybody else got a fun way to it's enhance? Just, it's just and you fluff. Can, you can think about it while Maria <clears> tells us how the shadow creatures. Are. Yeah, so she closes her eyes and as she opens them they're pitch they're pitch black like like icker. And then uh, a little bit of like wavy smokiness starts swirling around her and the shadows that you guys are uh, giving off onto the floor all rise up and they look exactly like you. And then they start darting down different corridors. Hmm. Now, you finally reach something that nobody has anything helpful to do except Maria. Uh, I, I have something I could do. Okay, do yours uh, first, then I'll yes. tell you the secret. Uh, so it's it's Isaiah who who's our survivalist. Yeah. Okay. Such so, as it is. <laughs> uh, Lena will uh whisper very uh honeyed words, just just like I believe in you, Isaiah. And I think in a place built like this, um, water damage would be a concern. Uh, because I don't know how close we are to the water table, but we're probably not far. So, keep that in mind. Um, and, uh, them, so, choose a person to be your charge, spend momentum and give them a direction or a suggestion. When they act on that direction, they gain plus two enhancement to do so as long as I am watching. Uh, if I have a bond with the person, I can forego the cost. That's three enhancements, meaning if you make a success, it's all or nothing. I can uh, double that with my honey words <laughs> as well. That would overlap. However, Darn. this is where I remind you all your science. Science are never powerless. If you don't have the power you want or need, you can imbue uh awareness or legend by spending it not investing into your purviews and if your purview fits you can just make up an effect it's called miracles mm. nice. oh, yeah. i mean 
if you'd allow it, the journeys could be used for this as well, finding the proper path. If you spend a point of your actual legend on journeys, uh, yes, I will allow Devin to double his dice. Okay. I was also going to say, uh, I have uh, I Jajalar, which uh, is always got uh, smartphone functions, so uh, I can try and use our GPS in there to constantly track us to make sure we don't backtrack and make our way around. It's a good idea, but the scenario has written in the book. <laughs> Plan for that. No signal. Uh, yeah. Magical. However, doubling the dice and the enhancements can be hard to fail. So give us five rolls, Devin, and show us how you can fail five times with six dice and three enhancements. No! That is the way it would be. Alright, so I'm just going to use... Isaiah's cool. Devin has two. the worst luck ever. Hmm. I don't have the worst <laughs> luck. The worst luck has me. <laughs> five rolls? Five rolls, but just do one at a time and get new results as we go along. Alright, one success. So you get no trap on that one. <clears throat> one success. Good. Three more. <laughs> like bare minimum success too. We roll a seven. One success. <laughs> Devin, everyone. <laughs> Carry on. Two successes. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh man, that's one more. Oh. And zero. Oh. oh. <laughs> and there it is. You make there... it almost Wait. all the way to the Wait. vaults. It's only giving me four dice. Okay, it I'm still gonna gave... do a trap on you because it's fun. It only gave me four dice that time, though. Oh, you make it almost all the way to luck. the end and only set off one trap. This actually means your luck is really good, by the way. Uh, it, yeah, it only gave me four dice the entire time, so uh, my uh, cunning roll didn't work. You want a mythos trap or a mundane trap? I'll let the band pick since we're close to the end. Mythos. Myth- mythos. mythos. Yeah, let's go to mythos. <laughs> Yeah, Shut off definitely. the Kickstarter Mythos Trap. I, Let's go. I, mythos Trap. I, I mythos don't want to die. I do. Mythos Trap. No, exactly. You'll just go insane. For the last three minutes, the entire floor and ceiling has been nothing but... It's set into it. You're not actually walking out. But nothing but multifaceted eyes made out of crystals of various kinds. Just endless rows of them for hundreds of feet. I feel like almost make it to the end and Isaiah's like, click. I think I just stepped on a pressure plate, guys. And out of every single eye from every direction erupts cold, ethereal, green flame that screams. So. Did you say the flame screams? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I did just making flame sure. Screams. Just double check. It washes over all of you. And I gotta check that tag. Hold on. That's the, the scariest I've ever heard, Dwayne. <laughs> that, of course, is when Adobe decides to crash. Mm-hmm. See, the, the, the screams are even more creepy when they're not as scary. Okay. That's actually kind of true. Is this an inflict damage stunt? This is a attack. It's not a stunt. But, I mean, if you have something for that, yeah, we're fine. I would like to imbue legends and apply unbreakable. Which negates okay. this damage. I'll allow it. <laughs> Shockwave at scale tag. Awesome. Oh wow! Oh, so, this is a this is a get wrecked. This is a get wrecked trap. Yes. <clears throat> so then, the moment this happens, then can I reflexively activate uh, a boon? Yes, if it's allowed to be reflexive, like Kurt, uh, Kurtz. Yes. Uh. So I'm going to activate uh, the temporal shift and backtrack to before the eyes and flames. For those of you that don't have those cool powers, uh, give me your defenses starting with uh, Malcolm. 
Defense, oh boy, here we go. Let's see. Where is... Under action rolls on the left. Ah, uh, five. Five. Say before or after, whichever is closer. Go ahead and roll your dice. Defense is rolled in this one. That damage is static. You roll defense. Okay. Anyway, you want to make it roll five die. Go ahead. Or use clicky clacks. Sorry. <laughs> That's for everybody, not just you. Oh. Rolled. Or should I... What does that do with the button? Oh, okay. Four successes. Nice. You only lose two health. Oh, wow. Which is a lot for this <clears throat> game, but still, it could have been a lot worse. The flames burn you, but not to death. Lena. Oh, that's nice. All right, my defense is three. Roll it. That could be bad for you. Uh, I think I rolled wrong. Uh, you just click the defensive fool. You have to. Okay. If I click the roll button. Oh yeah, click the roll button. Sorry, not the number. If it doesn't uh, pop up right that's away, you three roll. successes. Oh, nice! Yay! Three damage. And actually, do uh, defense dice explode? Yes. Because there's two tens there. Oh, great. Okay. Apparently, typing is good luck for me, so I'm going to continue doing that. <laughs> and that's one more exploding dice. Holy cow. That's how you do Yay. it. That's how you do Yay. it. <laughs> wow. So that's four. Yeah, four successes. Two damage. I'll take it. Hooray. Where are you? Uh, okay, I'm rolling four. Uh, that's three with an explode. It did did explode, it. though. Yeah, he did it. Oh, I did it? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's weird. Okay. Three damage for you. And last but not least, Marius. One is Kurt just, is Kurt just, like, air guitars and his guitar actually appears. <clears throat> and he hits a note on it. And the note creates a physical bubble you can see around him. One success, Marius. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, oh, five damage, Marius. Mm. That's that's how much health I have. Marius goes down. Oh no! How do you fix that? Uh. <laughs> Marius is not taken you out. You don't. <laughs> Marius, Marius is not taken out unless you are able to actually help Marius at least remove one health level. Of damage. Yeah, uh, Lena will like whip off her scarf and use it as a bandage. So you whip off your scarf and you're like, it's nothing to bandage. But then you beat the crap out of it and put the fire out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will do that then. Uh, <laughs> go wrap, wrap, <laughs> wrap hands in scarf so they do not get burned. Intellect plus medicine, Lena. I don't have medicine. I know. <laughs> Doesn't mean you can't try though. I'm here for you, Marius. I'm trying. Isaiah yes. walks in and says, oh, "What I, I miss?" Have at that moment. Two <laughs> intellect. Oh crap! Marius is on fire. Uh, I'll kick him. Just... On. I'll kick him out. Uh, what? What's the target number? Uh, it's based on how many successes you get, how effective you are. Oh no! I mean, I rolled a six and a nine. Oh, eight. Target number eight. Okay, so one success. Okay, so he's stabilized. It's a good start. And then Isaiah walks in going, that was close. Oh, shit. Uh, do, do you have a uh, uh, first aid kit? Um, uh, uh, burn cream? Anything. Which you have to yell because Kurt got carried away. And he's just soloing out up and down the keys. I only, I only have something good for jellyfish stings. Do you actually have medicine, Isaiah? No. Okay. Anybody actually have medicine? I... Like the physical medicine or the skill? The, the skill. skill. I do. I have three dots in medicine. Give me an intellect plus medicine. See if you can help Marius out. Oh, that's money. That's seven. Let's go. Please don't. Oh my die. god. <laughs> and a critical <laughs> failure. With, yeah, with two crit ones. <clears throat> Please this don't awesome. critically die, sweet Marius. Don't die. Kill then, me. Uh... Kill me. Kill me. <laughs> 
So, talk to me about your purviews, because Maria might accidentally kill Marius. Hold on. I who have... Can, who, can, who can blow points to save Marius? Can I somehow transfer my epic stamina innate power to him? If you spend a point of legend or a point of awareness, yes. But I'm going to make you do legend for that one. Since I haven't been able to use the boon for uh, asking you for a single question, uh, how can I save him? <laughs> that would have been the answer. That's what I was specifically thinking, so don't waste it. Even okay. Uh, yeah. There's I'll... more things coming. <laughs> if I activated awareness for my reflex, does that do anything weird? Like, is it... it doesn't they... do anything weird, no. Okay. All right, then I'll activate my legendary power to give him epic stamina, which, whenever you're suffering injury conditions, reduce the complication imposed by the condition by one. I don't know if that's going to help. Which means I'll actually let you become conscious at your current damage level. You can stand up. Uh, that still means you'll be taking... Uh, I think that puts you at main. He's only I'm, most I'm, I'm assuming I'm complications. Main. Yeah, so you're at minus three penalties to your dice rolls. But, or plus four, plus three, meaning you need three more successes. But you're not dying anymore. You're most That's dead. good. <laughs> uh, also, for Malcolm and Kurt, you spent your legend, meaning those are gone. If you want to use more purview powers, you'll have to use your awareness. And if you spend that, you're out. I unless you take a fate binding. Thought I Not had down more here for <laughs> legend. Nope, you've all got one legend. Some of you have more than one awareness, Kurt, but you all only have one legend because these are ah. beginner characters. Okay. Yeah, that's why it's easier to imbue than to spend. Yeah. Uh, you had a thing where you were able to restore it from something that, but you didn't have more. But yes, if either Kurt or Malcolm currently have votes from last week from the audience, not from the players, you could restore that legend. Audience um, points restore legend, player points restore awareness. Yeah, I don't have any audience points, but I got like okay. five player <laughs> points. <laughs> you can burn Marius all day. <clears throat> yeah. Marius bolts up from death, basically to sit it like sitting straight up on the ground before you finish that sentence oh okay your awareness is now too because you saw the other side Ooh. i was just about to say it, it and riley and i'm just like <laughs> he rose again speaking strange words so ow everything hurts you uh Make it to the vaults themselves. The vaults are a series of locked doors along a long, wide corridor. Each lock is a state-of-the-art at keypad entry. Three successes. Making them difficult to crack, but it's not impossible. Technology plus intellect. Multiple failed attempts, though. You're pretty sure there's more traps. Once inside one of the vaults, then you can actually figure out how to get to the prize, because they're double locked. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, is there any way to tell from the outside uh, what is in which vault? Uh, it doesn't specify, so I'm going to say yeah. Cool state-of-the-art unbreakable glass. Sure. Okay. See-through aluminum. Thanks, Scotty. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, oh. let, let's go for the painting first and then see what else we can make off with. Uh, so. Marius is by the entry door they just had and it's sitting on the floor, just like leaned <laughs> up against the wall, just like ready to like roll out the door if they trigger another trap. <laughs> little twitch in the left side of his cheek. Uh, so, technology plus intellect. Uh, my die pool is four. Someone else probably has a better one than that. I'm at seven. What was that one? Yeah, you you're up. Intellect plus technology. Technology. Oh yeah, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. The entire I, room smells like salt water too. So I've been I've been rolling garbage. Don't roll garbage now, Maria. Here we go. I'm gonna give <clears throat> give Marius 
the uh, bonus escape the room roll. <laughs> it's trying. It's trying. <laughs> it's shooting. Oh, it's so tense. It, it knows. Four successes. Ooh. Oh, that is uh, plus one enhancement for the next roll. Oh, thank God. The door pops open, and now you can make another survey roll. Uh, which, in this case, is going to be... Let me look at the lock. Oh, this one's subterfuge plus cunning. Right. It lets you look over the vault and figure out what the trick is. That. That I might be able to... Oh, no, wait. Lena had more than me. Like, by Still, one. Yeah. <laughs> Roll it. Give yeah, it to us, Malcolm. The stakes are high enough that we might as well pile uh, okay. this one out. Do okay. it. Well, no. Actually, no. Let Malcolm roll first to assist. Oh. Too oh, late. I'm can... sorry. Yeah. Now you no, got you it. Can... <laughs> she got four successes. She's oh, kicking you did butt. Get it. Uh, yeah. You, you look through the glass and you the assessment, I'm going to give it to you for all of them, tells you the frog statue is locked within two color wheels that use the same optical illusion device that we just got through in the labyrinth. So that except when viewed a certain way, you can't see it right. And it's a color coordination challenge. The ring is behind a door with a giant rotary dial. Inside each of its ten rings is another dial. Zero to nine. It's a math puzzle. The shield is a door is a grid of squares. You must press them in the correct pattern to release the shield. The sheet of music it's locked behind an alphabet puzzle. The sketch is behind a door engraved with a tangled maze of grooves. There's a lever to move through the grooves in the right order to get through the maze. And you're like, Mother of God, the Dreamlands key just needs the key the Whisper undoubtedly has on their person. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so what kind of hoke you got to get through this door? <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> can we decay? You could it? try to break. You could try to break through this door, but you need five successes to bypass the lock with fix. Do I have any momentum? All right. Not currently. Darn. Not for this. What about rust and decay? It might be your chance now. They already know you're here. <clears throat> yeah, go for it. Well, also, if it's uh, the keyhole, does the keyhole actually go to the other side? Yeah, but there's no room to teleport in there. No, no, not teleport. Uh, because among the stars says uh, allows you to pass through the smallest of cracks. Yeah, but you have to fit inside. It's not. It's a door that opens to like a little display case. It's like a. Yeah. You can't fit mm. in there. <laughs> so Rustin. So I'll came. describe it better. You actually mm. enter the vault and you can walk around it, which is in its own little thing. Okay. So rest of decay. Uh, with a touch, you can corrode and destroy any item. Make a creator skill roll and apply successes to making the item decay. The item is broken and destroyed. Its successes is equal to its size. If the item has a defensive scale or armor that increases its scale against force, then you must match the additional scale and successes. So give us your uh, occult roll plus uh, what were we, dexterity for guitar strumming. Dead. I'm just going to decay it with sounds. Basically, that's what you do, yes. <clears throat> Please decay, stupid simple door. <clears throat> um, ten again? Yep. I'm going to... I'm going to throw another dice at this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what do you get? I, I got critical. I got Jack and a little bit of shit and critical shit. Was it a critical failure? Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't oh, actually. No. I don't know what that <laughs> wouldn't. That wouldn't. Oh, oh, I know what that would do. <laughs> you construct you more door. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that wouldn't work here. But I do know what it would do. You like throw your power into it, and you're like, "Why's it not working?" And if you want, you can get really mad and blow an awareness and force your way through. Because you've got more than one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? So you get he gets really mad and hits, like, the power cord. <clears throat> and the lock rusts and falls off. 
but... the door swings open. But unfortunately, his power did work, just hit the wrong target. And the tarp disintegrates, allowing you to see the painting! Oh, uh, <laughs> do it. Of course. Do it. I mean, in all honesty, Lena was about to rip the canvas off anyway. Hold on. <laughs> Initiative time. Because the painting is the most realistic <laughs> depiction of an impossible place you've ever seen. Like the colors are wrong and the location, like this is the dreamlands. However, ghouls start pouring out of the painting. What? Oh, sweet. You know, with little hooves and clawed hands. Yeah, these are the things that killed a friend. Cool. Yeah. Hmm. All right. How do we roll initiative? There's down arrows uh, in the last. Same slot. place defenses or the down arrows. Yeah, like you said. Mine just says roll. There's no number. Yeah, it should it, it uh, should auto calculate. It's based on your stats. Okay. Yeah, it, it rolled zero. Did it roll zero? Yeah. Hit the, down, oh, hit the yeah. double down arrows. Hit the double down arrows on your quick bar. The quick bar is what made me roll zero. Yeah, quick bars. <laughs> yeah, they're all, yeah, they're all rolling, rolling zero. zero. You'll hit have to figure the... it out the hard way then. Cunning <laughs> plus composure, is that what it is? I assume dexterity is my fault. Um, oh, yeah, it's, I think it's one or the other. Yeah, it's dex and composure for this. You roll that Pretty many sure. dice, right? Yeah. No, you roll a d10 plus that as a modifier. A single d10. That's right. Plus your dexterity and composure as a modifier? Right. Off. I got a seven total. Uh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Everyone, a nat one. 17 total for Marius. Uh... 15 ten, total for me. 10 oh, for sorry. Maria. All right. Uh, Good Isaiah. Eight. Total. Lena, 15? 15. 15. Lena and Malcolm. Who has the higher cunning? Uh, my cunning is four. Beat me Double. by one. Uh, uh. Marius is first. There are one, two, three, four, at least five ghouls. We'll see how it goes. Might be more. Good. Uh, are, are ghouls considered a size larger than us? So ghouls are uh, look like bestial humanoids with rubbery skin and dog-like faces. Uh, they range in appearance from near human to completely beast-like. Depends how far along they are. Uh, the closer they get to beast form, the taller they get. But none of them are going to be taller than seven feet. And they're yes. hunched over, so it doesn't even look like it. So they would not be a size. Correct. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, Marius is still sitting down on the ground, just like fuck all of this. Pull back my right. my, co my coat <laughs> jacket one hit from death. I will pull out Giant's Bane, okay. which is just this giant revolver. <laughs> the barrel is like the size of my forearm, and I just I still gonna be able to just level it with one hand though. And I'm just gonna take a shot at the first, the closest ghoul. Um, I I actually, are, if there's any of them that are in a line, like one standing behind the other, or multiple are standing behind the other, I'm going to aim for those, because it has the piercing property. Not on this side, but I mean, the bullet will go through you into the painting, and you know, there's more stuff coming towards the painting now. That's fine. Um, as I cock the hammer on Giant Spain, you all can like feel your skin tingle in your hair raises up on your arms is just the static electricity and the room like builds. Um, I am going to be completely honest. I don't know. I just, I'm except, assuming this is like decks and firearms is like what I'm rolling here. Yep. Correct. Cool. That's a shit ton of dice. And Giant's Bane gives me one enhancement just for free, just for using the gun. Yep. <clears throat> 
It also makes a ridiculously loud noise. Yes. Giant Spain cracks like thunder, and I like the gun. <laughs> Four successes plus an enhancement. What's the ta- damage for this bad boy? Uh, good question, you. <clears throat> I do not know. It doesn't say in the like, the description. I assume there's just a static number for guns, maybe, or... It has its own stats. Oh, let me get that book open. Silly Adobe crashing on me. Has the lethal tag? I'm not sure what that means. Oh, shit. I assume oh, that's good. I need to roll initiative for my mooks. Or the mooks. All right. Oh, no. spell it right. That would help. There we go. <laughs> Comes up a lot in the fluff. Give me a second. Yes, it does. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Probably shouldn't start a hurricane in here. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm not doing the knack. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that would be bad. One more moment. I'm almost to where I need to be. So, uh, plus one scale for being giant Spain means <laughs> it means that the ghoul you hit in the head, the head disintegrates into a fine red crimson mist, is what that means. Excellent. We're gonna yeah. live. <laughs> so, uh, double checking to make sure it doesn't have any. Nope, you're good. That's yeah. Instant death to that poor guy is what that means. We'll say it was the one that was about to go after you. Lena! Okay. Uh, I am going to use my deception purview. Okay. Uh, the cost is imbue one awareness. Uh, and it is awareness plus manipulation versus resolve plus legend. Okay. Uh, and so uh, you can lock a person within their own mind, creating an entire world which they believe they are interacting. The illusion feeds upon the target's own memories and thoughts, filling in gaps and details, whatever they should believe is there. You can direct what the person builds the prison out of, such as childhood memories or their current surroundings. But once you start, you have no control over what the person believes they experience there. Uh, it uh, is you're, pr- you're pretty sure this use- doesn't have childhood memories, but you can use the room. I'm sorry? You're pretty sure it doesn't have childhood memories, but you can use the present environment. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I, I would like to convince them that their friends or their other ghouls are their enemies. Go ahead, make your roll. Okay, so, um, important question. So the cost is imbue one awareness? Yep. So that means I spend an awareness? No, imbue means it's invested in the power and you can't use it for any other power that needs it until you release it, but it doesn't go away. Okay, uh, so... I cast the um, uh, the visions earlier, uh, and when I complete that mission, I get plus one awareness and plus one legend. Uh, does this count? Not until you actually get the painting. Okay, so my awareness then would be one. Right, which means you can imbue it into this power, and that's okay. the only thing you can do for the fight. All right, that's fine. 
Okay, that is uh six die pool. I've got five manipulation. Hooray. Okay, they have rolled, so now I just gotta see what you get. Okay, uh, remind me what number I'm looking for again? It's a pose, so whoever's higher wins. Uh, what qualifies as a, as a Oh, eight. Event? Okay, uh, one exploding ten. Uh, two successes. Two successes. <clears throat> You convince half of the remainders oh. that they're enemies, so we're going to have those two attack each other instead. Of sense. Well done. I'll take it. That one closet is buddy, making it Maria's turn. Oh, it is? Oh, great. Uh, the... uh, I think it's uh, Malcolm's turn. Oh, yep, you're right. I went down the list too far. <laughs> uh, however, a uh, quick question for you. For me? Uh, no, for Tyler. Uh, how many of my mooks survived our uh, excursion? How many does it normally generate? It just says one or more. How many successes did you get on the activation roll? Uh, 300. Uh, uh, four. No. God, that was so long ago. We'll call it four. So you have three shadow monsters. Okay. Can you add them in at initiative 11? Um, yes. That would be after Malcolm. Shadow dudes, got it. What do they so Malcolm go? So I'm looking at my unnamed shadow creature that has four dots. Yes. It's in the initiative, but it does what it wants. Oh, it does what it wants? Oh I didn't yep. know that uh he he that's a really cool birthright in that it just it protects you. Oh, Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, I guess then what I will do is um, war. Okay. Whenever I'm involved in a conflict, not just physical, any conflict will do. Um, <clears throat> no wait, wait a second. Let me see here. Oh, gonna go down to the ability, not the innate power. Um. I imbue one awareness, it's one scene, multiple characters, it's awareness plus manipulation versus composure plus legend. Um, I agitate and incite those around me, anyone affected within range suffers a plus three complication to attacks. Um, they can attack target of my choice. So I would like to use that on the ones that think we're enemies, I want them to think that the ones on our side are their enemies. Does that make sense? It does. Uh, what that means is they have a harder time not doing something that doesn't hit each other, but they still have a chance. You give them a complication. Anything they do becomes very difficult. Okay. If it doesn't involve hitting each other. So yes, sold. Awesome. Shadow dudes are next. Uh, sadly, because it's not my turn, I can't tell them what to do. So they pretty much just float there. Okay. Uh, the five ghouls you were dealing with are essentially out of commission. But you all look up at the painting because you hear a roar that actually like shakes your faces a little bit. And you see two things stomping towards the painting, like coming out of the painting. And they are very tall. They're 10 or 11 feet tall, maybe more. Can't tell those where they come out. They have four arms, two legs, and their mouth opens from the top like a flower, and it's just teeth. And the eyes are on the side. Mm. Cool. Yum. 
And they're surrounded by ghouls. Like a pack of them. At least 20. So, Maria, what would you like to do? Alright, well, first I'm going to tell my mooks to defend the party. Okay. They line up like a shield wall. They're mooks. They're, <laughs> they're cannon fodder. <laughs> well, what do you do? Uh, that is a good question. Oh, I have no weapons. I take a defensive stance. Okay. Because that's really I mean, that all does I give you. That does give you bonuses. <laughs> that is Isaiah. really all I can do. Okay. I guess I should do the smart thing. Don't do the smart thing, do the fun thing. I'm going to give them a roll to figure that out next year. All right, fine. I'll do the fun thing. Uh, I'm going to activate my uh, Noth -ke, uh, Horn Spheres Knack, which basically means that it's uh, deadly accurate and unsoakable, and I'm going to chuck it at the painting. Roll it. What do you want it to be? Athletics uh, plus? Yeah, athletics plus uh, dex. You're chucking. Okay. Two successes. It impales itself on one of the giant monster things with roars in pain. <laughs> and it starts limping because it's in its leg. <laughs> pouring out a black viscous substance. <clears throat> and last but not least, Kurt. Unless you thought of the smart thing, go ahead and do it. Uh, no, for the first time since you've been hanging out with him, Kurt's going to like get a serious look. And the whole time he's been like, doing guitar he's just air guitaring and he's just using his natural like vocal powers but this time he like air guitars and he starts like talking in like a guttural sort of like uh language like mythic mythic language not like uh -huh. heavy metal guttural but like mythos Mon guttural M i'm gonna go with like mythos mongolian guttural <clears throat> oh your throat yelling got it yeah so then, and he's just like singing lyrics and this guitar appears in his hands and he's staring down one of those crazy things and mm -hmm. he's using the Mad Sultan's Axe to, um, a targeted character must struggle to simply maintain coherent thought on each turn. If they wish to take an action, they must combine it with a stamina plus athletics roll at difficulty two. <clears throat> and then he's also good to do damage to it. Roll it. Uh, which is roll a scan stamina say, yeah. plus oh wow that's a lot of dice um okay S two successes out of 16 dice just two successes the odds <clears throat> assuming it rolled the dice right but it rolled 10 the one that hadn't been speared uh, you see it actually rip down the side of the mouth like a joker smile mm -hmm. from the raw force of the sound, so it falls open even wider. Ooh, and it roars in pain, looks at you for a second, but then gets really confused and starts stomping on ghouls. Like, one stomp splats a ghoul, it crushes and explodes into you. Nice. Uh, oh no, I'm not going to make him do a roll. I'm going to let Devin use the things he's been dying to use this whole time. Go ahead and ask your question. Your one GM question. And everyone will hear the answer. And they're all going to face bomb. What should we do to stop us from getting attacked by the painting? Knock the painting over so it's face down on the floor. <laughs> I was going to do that, but I chose the fun thing of throwing my spear. So, would, my, would, my, would, would the bullet from uh, Giant Spain not have knocked it over when it went through the ghoul and... The, hit, the, the, bullet the, went, the bullet went into the painting and hit a creature. You just okay. didn't see it. Why, that's the reason why my spear chucked into yes. the painting. You have to reach out, grab the frame, and pull it down. Which means I guess Marius isn't doing it. So what do you want to do with your turn? Uh, what, what's it What's it on? What's the painting on? An easel. Can I just... However, if you shoot the easel, you might knock it over backwards. Let's say if you get three successes, it falls the way you want. 
Alright. And a plus one enhancement just for using the gun is worth it. Yeah, right? Uh, firearms, dexterity. Okay. Five successes. Nice. Yeah. It falls exactly the way you want. <laughs> and and because that's a critical success, a couple of things are going to happen in the words of someone yeah. famous. <coughs> yeah. It falls over the ghouls. <laughs> they're still fighting each other, so they're sucked back in. And your awareness goes up to three. <laughs> no! I need you to tell us how that manifests for you. So that like faint sea air you've Eric, been smelling. I'd just like to point out before you finish the description, the awareness you picked up was from looking into the dreamlands and you worship. Who again? Cthulhu. Who is the master of what? Dreams. Mm -hmm. Make it real. <laughs> uh. So the faint smell of seawater you've been smelling just like amplifies, but it's like it turns rotten, like red tide. Um, and it just kind of like overpowers everyone. Meanwhile, like you see Marius's eyes roll into the back of his head. And even though he's like crippled, like crippled injured, basically, you see him just kind of like go full like puppet strings and just kind of like very awkwardly get, get up. And you see him just kind of like, like the face, like where the painting was and coming out of the painting, you just like see like weird colors and uh, like just the weird things you see in your dreams that are just like weird am amalgams of like a whole bunch of like you know like a horse head on like a person's body that's like speaking in german and like all those kind of stuff just like kind of rise out of it as like uh almost like holograms very briefly and then you just see like marius just kind of start doing like a weird like he reenacts the teacup dance and then he gets put back down and he just sits there like, as if he's, like, crumpled in on himself. Nice. It's the weirdest, freakiest nightmare you've ever lived in your life. Once you all recover from that moment of fantastic awesomeness, uh, since we're very near the end, I'm going to be nice and say, your master thief makes the rules necessary, robs the shit out of this vault. Uh, Take it. And we'll split the proceeds with the party. But the question becomes, now what? Now what? What? We're trapped in the vault still. Can't go back out that way. We. I can just use the door power to close the door on the vault and open it to anywhere we want. Yeah. If you could open the door, yes. You have to be able to no, no, open no. the door to go through it. The door the to the. Door. Not not the vault door. The. Uh, the, the door to this room. Door, I think. Yeah. Not, not the door to the room. The door that well i melted that door though damn it yep I mean, however someone else could help you out i'm Anything just gonna burn legend is a door i'm gonna burn legend and basically teleport us <clears throat> Devin has the stars purview so he could use a miracle uh, power by burning legend to get the stars teleport out and power he doesn't currently have yep. he can teleport your group to anywhere he's been on the planet dope i like so that. guess what guys we're going to Arkham. <laughs> yeah. Yay! I want to go home. This place sucks. Maybe we're gonna just do like, it. please, just well, get no, me to a hospital for the love of God. To, no, if you if you send us to Milan, I know some very shady dealers nope. who can unload nope. all of this immediately. We will pay for you to take a luxury jet home. Nope. Guess what, guys. Welcome to Arkham. So we're taking the painting with us? Oh, yeah. Uh, Lena is. We should cover it up first. Yeah, wrap it in a cloth uh, Lena something. will roll it up. Like, she'll cut it out of its frame and roll it up. From the backside, we will cut it out of its frame. Uh, yes. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. But not, her... not, that, not that mean at the end, Devin. But this really? Was in her... the middle. Really? 
her dolphins <laughs> really want to see that painting, and so she's just gonna try and take ownership of it, show it to her cult, because that's what Alptrum wants. So are we? So where are we at? Are we going to art? Is that where we're actually going? Yes, that's where we're going. Okay. Which means, as the final scene fades out, it's the six of you walking away from Arkham Asylum and towards Large March's Donut Barn, Arkham franchise, <laughs> arguing over what to do with the painting. <clears throat> Still going Thanks. with drop well, to the bottom of a well. I'm, I'm pretty sure one of us doesn't want to go to Large March's right now. I mean, Ooh. a donut now, has... Can food. you please take me to a hospital for the love of God? <laughs> all right, so it will be nice to right. say that I teleported us near the hospital. Well, the, Thank the, you. Somebody keeps okay. complaining. No, the, the, yeah. the, the, <laughs> Sorry you missing a trap caused me to die. No, it's great. The, you're at the Miskatonic University Teaching Hospital. <laughs> it is going to sort of click perfect. the hammer yes. on my revolver. I swear to God, <laughs> he loses the accent and everything. I swear to God, if you do not take me to the hospital. <laughs> well, audience, that is the end of our delve into Masks of the Mythos for now. We're going to play this later in the year on Saturday, though, on our Back of Kids show. However, that's not the end of Scion, because next week, Fatty takes over Running Dragon. Gasp. Which means, <laughs> surprise gasp for the players, too. This is Devin Sendoff. He'll be replaced by Steve the Dragon. Oh my god! Yeah, nobody else knew. Uh, as for other Onyx Path goodness, you can enjoy with us before next Tuesday at 9 p.m. right here on the Onyx channel playing Dragon. Uh, you can catch me, Eldritch, Ech Eldritch Echoes, on Saturday running Deviant the Renegades, a story I call Radiation Birds on our channel. Uh, Dragon on Tuesdays until the next Kickstarter. So, you get a good good bit of a longer story out of that one. Every Friday, Patty runs Scarred Lands, Dracula Genesis, Titan's Lament on Fridays. I mean, you get two for next week. <laughs> and starting on Sunday, Mage the, 20, Mage the Ascension, 20th Anniversary Edition, crossover with Cult, a Cthulhu Mythos story called White Walls. Cool. For our not on Path yumminess. On Mondays, Cyberpunk Red in the Image of Man Made run by Eric. On Wednesdays, Infinity the RPG, Outer Worlds Inner Demons run by Sean. And on uh, and, we, and Thursdays, Kimchi's Grimdark Chronicles, where we're playing uh, Strange Aeons, the campaign in the world of Grim Hollow. Come check them all out. They're all pretty awesome. Go to VorpalTales.com if you want to check them out and see our calendar, including all our other awesome games social media links, Discord where you can come hang out with us, links to past games on YouTube and our Patreon if so inclined. Science of the Outer Dark. Let the viewers know the next show they can catch you in with us and other things you do outside of Warped Tales of the Cool. Hey, I'm at Space Lord PJs. You can catch me tomorrow running Infinity, like Tyler said. It'll be awesome. Um, I also stream on the channel every once in a while, playing video games. And, uh, yeah, good times. Hey everybody, I'm Ever, and you can find me all over the internet as Changeling Ever. You can also buy nifty things in my Etsy shop, which is kind of slim pickings right now, but that is neat. As in, like, that's a really neat haircut, Ever. Uh, neat and co-designs. I am Patrick. You can find me everyone on the internet as Petty Shakes underscore. Uh, next time you'll see me be this Friday for Scarred Lands on the Vocal Tales channel, and then next week for Dragon. And uh, if you're going to be super awesome supporters of Warpal Tales, you should totally check out our supplements we published on Drive Through RPG and DMs Guild. Uh, the uh, the backer it, backer it, backer is it backer kit or backer it? I'm going to go backer say backer, backer, kit. backer kit. The backer kit for they came from beneath is out, and you should totally check out the Warpal Tales supplement for that waterlogged horrors. That'd be totally awesome. They mesh just so well, so and well. Looking forward to spring, and spring we're going to release Horrors from Beyond the Stars. Also, what? Just all that they came from. Just totally check it out. Uh, hello, my name is Rachel. Uh, I am on an every other Wednesday Scarlands show on Plastic Age Plays. We are off this week. Uh, we're going to be back next week 
Uh, actually, with a brief break from our Scarred Lands game chronicle, we're gonna go back to our Extreme Drowess Chronicle, in which I play a Drow Paladin who actually has a really big axe to grind with wool. Uh, ended, uh, ended that game, uh, killed Tiamat, became the Matriarch of House Drow Erden. That's cool. Uh, so, <laughs> next Wednesday, that'll be really fun. Uh, and then on Thursday, every Thursday, um, back here on this channel, Onyx Path, I run a Changeling the Dreaming game. It's a generational game. Uh, all the PCs have reincarnated. They've now reincarnated to the Interregnum during Victorian England. Two of them decided, hey, let's jump through that portal that quite obviously leads to a technocracy chantry. I approve. Yeah, but now I gotta, I gotta figure out what happens. Now you gotta create a technocracy <laughs> chantry. Oh, darn. I mean, I gave them three fully statted technocrats. Uh, anyway, it should be fun. That's gonna happen, uh, on the Onyx Path Thursday at 9.30 Eastern. Uh, and then I'm also gonna be in the White Walls game. I'm really looking forward to that. And I am Dwayne on the internet at Made of Kimchi. And the next time you will see me will be Thursday running... Uh, Strange Aeons in the Grim Hollow campaign setting. Excellent. And now for our ride or die viewers, it's vote hey. time. Oh, oh I Devin. skipped Devin, didn't I? <laughs> He's already gone in my head. I'm I Devin. know I'm already oh. gone in your head, but <laughs> seriously. I'm Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sullied, and the next time you'll find me is Friday for... Uh, Draco Genesis Titans Lament with Patty. Atta, atta boy. But for Devin fans, you can still catch him in Scarlands, of course, like you said. And in spring, in Dune. Mmm. Taste So of now, Ooh. ride or die voter time. Patty's going to have to figure out what reward he wants to give you for his game because these carry over to Dragon. Nothing. You get nothing. I'm Good day, okay sir. <clears throat> no soup for you. You lose. <laughs> <laughs> In the normal order, who and why? I'm going to give it to Patty because he almost died, but that's a waste of a vote. So Because he's the DM, that would give him more. Something. I'll take it. No, no. By totally. default, it goes to me. Oh, yeah. Okay. So then I <laughs> vote for Patty, who almost died, Old. but then Tyler led us through a really fun game, so he gets the die. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Doom! Um, I, too, shall give it to Patty, which, therefore, it goes to uh, Tyler. And the this reason I gave it... it up. No, actually, the reason I gave it to Patty was because, well, all the death... Fair. Okay. Uh, I will give my vote to. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna give it to uh, <clears throat> to uh, Dwayne for having to. Uh, it was a tie. It was a tie between uh, him and Ever for uh, they had to take the brunt of the guiding and taking the party and leading on the charge through this part, as uh, the faces did their job and it was time for the. Chaos and infiltrators to do their job this episode. Uh, I'm gonna give my vote to Patty uh, because I enjoy a good in character argument. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So you're welcome, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to argue with me in Patty's game. There. Yes. Just run into the next game with like five votes. <laughs> right. <laughs> So I just activate all of my powers at the same time. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay, and I'm gonna vote for Devin, who's not gonna be here next. Time. Which <laughs> so it goes to Tyler. To Tyler. <laughs> no, it goes to Steve. Actually, Steve. Yeah, it goes to Steve. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, so yeah, Steve, yeah, Steve, Steve. Steve has one one vote. <laughs> uh, because you 
really, really, really tried to use that same power like five <laughs> times. <laughs> Can I ask the question now? It finally How paid off now? in the end. Damn it, God, give me the answer. I keep asking and you don't give me anything. What's up with that? Uh, uh, I'm going to give my vote uh, to Rachel because oh, thank you. we finally got to do a heist. It was a very fun heist. 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 Everyone loves to do a heist. Kurt's bucket has officially been made. Mm. Uh, now, so I do have a question for Tyler. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the key that Whispers had that it we, was in his boot. Uh, no, it was it was a silver key, wasn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, <so>. it was. <laughs> For the audience, as we draw the curtain on Masks of the Mythos, we put our own little flair on it, but that entire adventure, with all the other tangents that the party didn't follow, it has multiple ways to get to the end, is included in the Masks of the Mythos manuscript preview you'll get if you support the Kickstarter, which you should do. You this already should have. Awesome. You already yep. should have supported it. This thing is awesome and well-made, and there's so many stretch goals. So yeah, on that note, we return to Rillier and Dream Darkly until Dragon return next week with a new fairy tale. Until then, good night. Bye. Uh, uh...